last test to get down with the rappers from the east to west. This party, please, that party, please. I'll funk them all with the greatest to be. This DJ Rock with the master beat. Let the book get in the sound that moves the beat. Somebody say, yeah, yeah. Somebody say, yeah, yeah. You party good, you going down. You compliment this funky sound. The funk is here, so you can prove. We want to make your body move. And that duck that there, his name is Zach. He's going to hit you with the rap. I say downtown shopping with some fashion in mind. Just listen here closely while I tell you my line. I'm slick tight, can be very naughty. I know him by the name of Spaldy Shorty. When taking out the other, they dress so mean. They put me in their mind and when Mr. Garnet. But Calvin Klein seems to come through until East Sailor Red walks in the GQ. But that's not it. They still want more. So I send him down to Studio 54. Stay George Dash Boy, Shorty C and Sassoon. I've got the jeans that make the tune. Then you smile and you smile with a mouth of vile. It doesn't work a bit. I can't undo now. Then you act at the stove, acting just like a jerk. But all he wants to see is your body work. Work your body, work your body, work your body. Work your body, work your body, work your body. Work your body, work your body, work your body. Work your body, work your body, work your body. Work your body, work your body, work your body. Work your body, Hey, all right, all right. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to. Shop Talk with Mel. Y'all know it's a live show because I know y'all heard all the rambling and all that good stuff. The rappers because we eat here, we drink here, we do everything right here in the studio. Today's topic is minding your business. Not mind your business, but minding your business. Paying attention and focusing on what it is that you want to do. Entrepreneurship. We got the bell ready because y'all know I will mess up a word in a second. Okay. And today's guest is none other than life's coach, Kim Hamilton. Hello. Hey, Mel. How are you? Good, good. Hey, you? I am fine. Thanks for having <laughs> me on the show. I'm excited to be here. Good, good, good stuff. We got Rugo in the building. Hey. And before we start, you already know I got to talk about this. Rugal, let me tell you, if y'all don't know, he had dreads like hanging down his back. And he just started all over, confusing the people. Had to start over. It looks good, though. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like my head looked like any kind of chocolate candy, like a milk <laughs> dud. Uh, uh, was it uh, uh, pepper? Was it Junior Mints? Mm. Whatever, whatever, whatever round chocolate candy there is. Whatever is round and right. chocolate. Uh huh. I like it though. Mm. I like it. Yeah. Do you feel light? You know, it's funny. I was told that I walk differently. <laughs> you Do know you? what I'm saying? I not, guess, not, not I, pay attention. I just thought I had extra pep in my step lately, but I guess not. You light on your feet. Yeah. Hate, but it that. was crucial, though, because, like, when the first one got cut, like, they cut it in the front, so it was, like, no return. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. It was like, it's like, yeah, this is happening. I'm like, ah. I, and it was like, the, they said, what's the worst part of it? I was like, hearing the scissors. Really? So did you have separation anxiety? I, I had, like... The anxiety I had was like, what was it going to look like afterwards? The way you looked before you had your yeah, You forgot? Yeah. It's been so long? But it was like, it was kind of like, I was thinking like, okay, why don't I try something that's a little bit more trendy in the look of, of the locks or whatever? Uh-huh. Now, like, you got their hair shade and boxes have some more over, you know, whatever. And, um, yeah, I didn't do that. I just said, I'm just going to start over. Well, you look quite remarkable. Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks. I like it. Yeah. So okay. We already talked about what was that, that last his, week? Yeah. She. When we she cut down about all the, of this or whatever, I it see. started growing. So, so no, no shame, November. Like it was like yeah. last week, and then you was like, oh, I hate going to the barber shop. They waste your time, and then boom. Yeah. Oh, boom. so you went to a female? I did. Okay. Yeah. So you prefer male or female? Um, I was gonna say this name where they were saying that this. You know what? You know what? Bro, you know what? Oh, people! <laughs> but I ain't gonna say his name. For, for, what, for what I needed done, I think it was better that a that a woman did it. You know, but the other thing was that she's also an architect by by training. Okay, so you know, so she know how to navigate. Is that well, what you're well, trying to I say? I'm trying to understand cause the correlation. Because it, it was like there were some things I wanted. I was taking into consideration, and like she had this uh, more technical eye. To it to say, well, if you do this, then this is gonna be that, 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 and that. 
but Not cosmetologists the, and barbers, that's what we do. Yeah, but it was on a, it was like on another, like she, another she, level. Yeah, she like kind of spoke my language a little bit more, I suppose. And then not to mention the peanut gallery up in that mug. Woo, I was like, ain't there like private booths or something? Like, you know, some, some shades, some like, I was like, yeah, they had these, like, these decorative curtains or whatever on the wall, but they were by like each station. And, I was and like, guess is these what? just for decoration or do they actually shut? Uh, listen, this is what's so funny because the life coach here, she owned the beauty and barber yeah. salon. Mm-hmm. So she could relate. That's hilarious. Uh, she was so, like, it, the decorations, the curtains, just like, uh, you wanted to. Just go into like yeah. a cubicle, <laughs> but it, it was it was just funny because we were we were having a good time about it and everything, and uh, you know, good, good, good stuff. Time. A couple other customers in there, they were kind of like, "What in the hell's been going on?" Because I walk in there and it, you know. So you went to a barber shop or a beauty salon, and she happens to be a barber as well. I or went to a, a beauty. Color? I went to a beauty salon, and okay. yeah, okay, all kind of like Ham's Beauty and Barber. I used to love that oh, place. Oh, thank you yeah. for that, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went, I went to a place that my wife goes to. I, I think it's, what is it, Pearls something? Pearls, that sounds so, nostalgic. Yeah. <laughs> per, pearls? So, yeah, so what I think is Pearl? Pearl. I mean, that, that's that why be... you know, you know, it's a, it's a good time. We had a good time. Hey, y'all got, probably got, did. got pizza and everything, and it was it's like up there on uh, Market Street, Um but anyway, it's by uh, the Uptown Pizza. And so we went. Oh, that's there. way oh, up. Hey, which cranked that Uptown oh it, oh, it's the bomb. I mean, like, it was like. I'm about to go up there and get some commercial time. It was. It was. Look, I'm about to go up there and get some commercial time. Oh, yeah. I'm talking sorry. About it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, we did that. You know, it was a good afternoon. And my, my wife, she got her hair twisted, too. So. How long did it take to. Not long. Time? Not long. The, the biggest issue of it was this the um, coming to Jesus. On like some things that had to be done that I was just kind of like. <sighs> you looking like yourself though. Yeah, yeah. I'm I excited. Guess so. I guess so. I, I mean, it's it's went over well, I suppose. But all right, I'm, I'm gonna ask this question. We are gonna get her because she got to go to oh, I'm funerals. Good. Oh I'm yeah. Good. I'm oh. like, I don't want to do that. But listen, so you went to a female barber, I, stylist. You went to a female stylist. I, yeah. Okay, so with a massage, would you prefer a male or a female? With a massage? With a massage. Just just ask. Just... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, want to know. It was, it's funny, though, because I remember I had to get physical therapy, and the guy who gave me a massage for my physical therapy, it was a guy who gave me a massage for that. And it was, you know, I mean, like, it was in a therapeutic kind of sense, it didn't, matter, it didn't really matter. <laughs> in your mind, it was just yeah, like... Yeah, a... it was just like, you know, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, it was therapeutic, man. You know, it's therapeutic. You so if you the went into the, so there. if you went in to get a massage and you had a choice, and I had a choice, would you prefer a, a male or a female? As a male, I just want to know. And that's kind of, I mean, I guess that's kind of funny because when when he when he was my masseuse when I was going for physical therapy, I was like, well, where is he at? You know what I mean? You know, because I mean, not, not not that he wasn't there, but it was like, okay, I'm about to go get this done by X Y Z. Just you know assumed I mean? it was male anyway. The, well, the first I didn't know in the beginning the mm-hmm. first time I went because it was just like one of those like kind of like I was doing all kinds of rehab, so okay. that's just a part of it. Okay. So, um, but then after that, you know, it was like okay, well, this is what, it, and it wasn't like in a weird area, you know what I mean? Like one of those areas you'd be like, I don't know, that's like with uh, the candles lit and a dude like, ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It, was, it was a dude no privacy curtain like that, you know, it wasn't all like that, you know, it wasn't like no, the, you know, sounds of the Far East playing in the yeah, background. Right, right. You know, it's just, it was just, it was cool, you know. But then um, we, when I used to work in Cleveland, we used to have, they, a person used to come in like every two weeks or something, it's like, a, was it fit? Fifteen dollars for fifteen minutes, and you had to have a minimum of fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. So you know, okay, you, yeah. that's cool. So that was, I mean, that was, um, you know, I mean, that that was a lady though at that time. I, I just think the thing is, is that it depends on wh- what your okay, what your intentions are. Like if you got, if you got, like, hey, I'm in true pain here. You want the you want the whoever the you best. just want a massage just to you relax. You know what I'm saying? Because there's been times where I got massages where I've been like, I shouldn't have had to pay for this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It just wasn't. It didn't get like, deep in enough. There, you know what I mean? And so, 
if you got if you going for like if you going for like true issues, you know, I think you should probably go with who the best person is. Yeah. Okay, all right. all right. Now Doug, he's like he he doesn't want a male to do his massages, and probably because you know you go in the room it's usually for relaxation. Yeah. I, me with females, I'm with you. Uh-huh. Me with females, I mean, unless it's like Big Bertha, then come on in. Because, yeah. like you said, I like deep tissue. Uh-huh. Not just your regular old, some, I had, I told you, did I tell you about the little the little lady I had? And I was like, how's she going to massage yeah, me? You she up. worked you out. She did good, though. <laughs> I was shocked. I was yes. like, she had, and, but it was so funny because she had to jump up there and like use like her elbow, elbow forearm mm-hmm. to, I am sitting there like, oh man, this is jacked up. I better go on and die. Like, so. Yeah. But he preferred that. And my reason for saying that is because I have an upcoming event, which is Mingle with Medicine Wine Sip. And there you will actually have a lot of people in the medicine field, the medical field. Go ahead. The medicine what? Right, the medical field that you can ask questions if you have any questions um, for them. Also, I have a massage therapist. She'll be there. She's Mm -hmm. one of the vendors, uh, facials. All that stuff is right there so that you guys can have it. Um, aromatherapy with the candles with uh, Nikki. Name of her company? Nick Ham's Naturally Nikki. Yes, 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 which is amazing. She has this one candle that I end up getting. It has like the citrus in it to make you feel good with energy. Okay. So those will be there for sale. I just can't wait. It's going to be awesome. It's yeah. at the in Youngstown, Ohio on Rand Avenue at the YWCA in the historic lobby. And it's going to be fun, fun, fun. And y'all know how I do it. Like I said, it's the Mingle with Medicine Wine Sip. So we got the chocolate fountain and all that stuff. I can't wait. I'm excited. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's get on with the show. That candle bothering you? What candle? Okay, he don't even know about the candle. No. That candle. Okay, oh. but it ain't it ain't Nikki's candle. <laughs> Nikki's oh. natural. That's one of them. Uh, actually, I think I got it at um, Bath and Body Works. It's overbearing to me though, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to oh, blow it out. Oh, it's overbearing. Uh huh. Because it's like the berry, blueberry type thing. It's like over the top. Okay. But anyway, we got Kim here. Mm-hmm. I went to one of her seminars, and you do it once a month, right? The third Sunday of the month at the YWCA on Rayan Avenue. Same place. It's the same place. Yes. And we talked this last week. What was the title of? I talked about the power of self, but what I did was something different. Usually I will just speak about a topic regarding Mm self-awareness. But in my life coaching experience, I get so many requests for business building because people know that I've owned and sold businesses. Um, The businesses that I've built, I've sold for profit. And, you know, I show people how I do that. So I talked about entrepreneurship first. And we talked about the things that it takes to be um, a customer magnet. And then I transitioned those same concepts into the power of self for the self-awareness portion of the event. Okay. Now, when I caught on, look, when I came late, up here late, <laughs> up here late, a mess. Look at him. Like, he all like the late. It's tardy. Yeah, she was tardy. When I came in, um, it was about the business part, and I wanted you on the show to talk about that because you kind of broke it down and the needs uh, when you want to start a business, who needs to be on your team, and all that good mm-hmm. stuff. So I would like for you to kind of elaborate a little bit on what you spoke about that day. Did I help you or no? Yeah. You got me? Okay. okay. <laughs> well, let me back up a little bit to what you missed because I'm trying to remember when you came in, what you just said, but I haven't go through the presentation. Yeah. <laughs> in my mind. Okay. What had I already covered? The first thing that I covered, so I know you missed that, was when you're going to go into business, you have to ask yourself, do I want a business or is this a hobby? Because there's definitely a difference. And what people do is they tend to think that if they enjoy doing something, that they can do it whenever they feel like at their leisure because their stuff is so good that whenever it's available, people are going to get it. And it doesn't work like that. You know, Walmart, they don't open when it's convenient for them. They're open. Mm -hmm. And that is what you have to think about. Like for me, roller skating is a hobby. I love roller skating. I can do it seven days a week. But if I flip that into a business, that takes the hobby out of it for me. That takes the joy out of it. I can't do that. So when you're going to do something that you enjoy, you have to think about whether or not you really want to put time into this Uh because it's your leisure or are you going to make a living off of it? If you want to make a living off of it, then you have to think about it just like the job you're trying to get away from right now. Okay. You have to go and do your 40 plus hours. 
And if you're not willing to do that at the convenience of the person that you're trying to exchange money with, uh -huh. then that's probably not what you should be doing. So is it something that you on, enjoy and want to make money doing? Mm -hmm. Or is it something that you want to make money doing? And if you're ready to put the work into it. Because okay. if you want to make a living off of it, you got to put some time into it. And you have to know that it's something that you're willing to do the work for. So I spent a little bit of time talking about that and breaking down the difference between the business and the hobby. Okay. And then we went into um, who's going to be there with you. What type of personality do you have? There's three types of personalities in the business. There's three types of personalities in the workplace. You have the person who's the dreamer. Right. You can see that per that vision. I'm a dreamer. Head. You know what you want. You see what it looks like five years down the road. It's all in your head. And then you have that, that person that's like the manager type. The person who sees your vision and they start <laughs> organizing it and uh -huh. putting it together. And then you have the, the doer. They just give me my assignment and I'll do it. I don't care how you came up with the plan. I don't care what your vision is. I need to know what you want me to do. Whenever you have a job, you have <laughs> those three personality types. And it's just like you're a little bit of all of that. Uh -huh. Like, you know, we have two hands, but you're dominant in one. Uh -huh. So you have to know your dominant workplace type. If you are the dreamer, like I am, obviously, because I have the businesses, I have them in my head. But I also needed somebody, and I use my hair salon as, a, as an example, and my home care business. The hair salon is the best example because I saw this salon. I saw one side as barbers, one side cosmetologist, and then I had my nail tech. I don't know jack about doing hair. Uh -huh. So I had to have someone who not only knew how to do hair, but worked in a salon. So what I did was I handled all the administrative stuff and I had my lead um, stylist show me how the salon actually operated. So she and I tied that in together. I had the dream. She pulled the dream together with me and taught me how to do it. But she did the hair. So her strong point was that manager type, doer type. My strong point was the vision type, manager type, and we pulled that all together into a hair care business. When I had my um, home care agency, I had that vision. I had to teach my mother how to manage it because I knew that if I taught her how to manage it, it would run exactly the way it was supposed to run. Okay. And then I hired the nurse aides to do the job. So you have to know where your strongest point is so that you can then have people around you to pick up your not so strong points. Okay. And a lot of people don't think of it that way. They just, just want to go. I got a business. Go out here to go. do it. You might be able to cook. That doesn't mean you know how to manage a restaurant. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> so Ain't that the you truth? You got to know your personality types and then you have to find people who have done or are doing what you want to do. You have to have a mentor or somebody. For me, my experience was the mentor for my home care. I'd done it for so long, but I did. I would tap into the personalities of my supervisors in the past. I worked at different home care agencies, so I picked up the best styles from each one. So I already had mentors who had gone before me to build the businesses. But a lot of people... Go to folks who don't know jack about what they're doing. They're sitting there struggling themselves. How are they going to tell you how to build a business and they haven't done what they're trying to do? And that's the truth. You have to find people who can get you to where you're trying to go. And then I think you must have come in on know what you're selling. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, hey, Mel. I was like, oh. <laughs> you have to know what you're selling. I can't just open up a hair salon and say, come get your hair done. Okay. I'm selling self-esteem. I'm selling body image. I'm selling confidence because you don't want to go in front of the whole world the way you came into the salon. You want to go in front of the whole world the way you're going out of the salon. Okay. So in between coming in and going out, you're selling customer service. You're selling individuality. You have to know what that person is actually paying for. They're not paying to get their hair done. They're paying for the way they're going to feel after you do it. Okay. When you go into, when I had my home care business, I didn't just sell home care services to people. I sold the opportunity to stay home. Okay. I sold um, independence. I sold employment opportunities for the people who did the work. You always have three customers in the business, the person paying for it, the person getting it, and the person doing it. If those three people are not happy, your business is in trouble. But all of that comes with a mindset. You have to have a mindset for that. Are you committed to the purpose? If you're just opening up a business to make money, shut it down. 
Because when you find yourself getting to the point where you might lose a little bit of money or when things, you know, balance off at a place where you're not really satisfied with the income, then you have nothing to motivate you to keep going. I was passionate about people enjoying themselves in the salon. I was passionate about people staying home and being independent. And I was passionate about the service they got from people. A lot of the reasons why my business worked, and I tell other people this as well, don't ask your employees to do something you're not willing to do yourself. Ain't that the truth? If you're not willing to get dirty, don't ask somebody else to do it because you're really not showing commitment to your own product. So you have to have, you know, people talk about, you know, your business structure. Are you going to be a corporation? Are you going to be an LLC? Are you going to have a partnership? You know, what is your business plan? All of these other things, you can get tons of information on that. But I help people get into the self-awareness part. What part of your life's purpose, what part of your big vision are you trying to accomplish when you start this venture? Because if you don't have questions answered like that, what's going to motivate you when it does get tough? So that was what you heard me talk about. Customer magnet starts within you, not from the community or your target market, which is another one of the uh, questions that I answer. Who are you trying to get the money from? Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're in business, you're so hungry, you don't want to turn down anybody and things go wrong there. If you're selling hamburgers and french fries, then don't start trying to do ribs and <laughs> You know, right, right. Well, I don't want to, you know, leave out the filet mignon and the... Ri no, 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 no. Your area starts with hamburgers and french fries. Now, you get that market corner, and then we can break out into the other stuff. But if you're trying to do so much at one time, you lose focus, you lose confidence, you lose vision. Stick with your hamburgers and your french fries until you master that part of the business. That's probably where you have the most knowledge, which is why you started there. And let that be your training ground so that when you grow and you build and people are starting to see that you are there, uh -huh. then you're transitioning smoothly. You're transitioning with a sense of uh, knowledge and base. You've done a lot of your trial and error moves by the time you branch out. So stick with it one little thing at a time and let the business grow for you instead of you trying to push it. Okay. So that's a lot of what I talked about. And it was very informative. You had any questions? No. She nailed it. Like, really, really bad. You got any questions live to the audience? No, she was. she's on point. Yeah, how about she's that? On point. Right, right. That's why I was like, oh, wait a minute. I got to get you to come here. Let's talk about this. Because there's a lot of people that do want to start businesses. And I have seen and witnessed where it's like they're here, then they're over there. And just kind of like what you said, to start rib, the analogy that you use, hamburgers or french fries, and then you want to do ribs because somebody decide, oh, I don't... I don't really like hamburgers or french fries, but uh, what about chicken? You sell that and they're like, oh, okay, well, I want to accommodate mm -hmm. everybody. And everybody's not buying chicken wings mm -hmm. or ribs, you know what I mean? So then you lose money. I would think that, you know, you're trying to cater to everyone. Now, when you said that you sold your businesses, mm -hmm. so you build these businesses up and then you sold them. Go into detail as far as like, you don't have to go into great detail because mm -hmm. I know that's going to take, take <laughs> some time. But why you decided to sell your business, and I know that you said for a profitable amount, mm -hmm. um, but is that something that you actually said, okay, I'll build this business and then I'll sell it? Or is it just, okay, I'm done with that part of my life and let me move to something else and I'll sell it? Okay. Like, what was the purpose? The initial reason for selling my home care business, my home care business was built strictly by family. I taught my mother how to be my boss. She was retiring from the city of Youngstown as the nursing director. So even though she was a nurse, she had a different background. So I trained her to run it. My aunt was my quality assurance coordinator. My cousin was my supervisor. Everybody was business except for one friend of mine. What would happen was as the business started to grow and we started to pull out a little bit into getting people from the community to work with us and for us, we started getting so high on the radar that like, People from the state wanted me to expand the service area, expand the services I offered, and my grandmother had Alzheimer's disease. My mother was retired, my aunt was retired, and I could see that my grandmother was getting you know, more progressive in mm -hmm. her disease, and I decided that I wanted my mom and my aunt to be able to retire. And I knew that as long as I had that company, my mother was not going to not be there for me. So in order... Oh, okay. So, and I was not going to trust anyone else to watch <laughs> my money 
to watch the administrative part of the business. That was all my mother. So that allowed me to do a lot of the management and technical stuff because of many days we just went out and did the work ourselves. If you're able to do that, a lot of the money comes right back to the business. Okay. So um, I had all of that going on, but the primary reason I sold it was because I wanted my mother and my aunt to be able to spend time taking care of my grandmother. And oh, okay. I really didn't want to get into, like, I was doing just the basic home care through um, Area Agency on Aging, through their waiver services. People were starting to come in and say, you know what, you guys are doing so well. You need to get your Medicare and Medicaid certification. And I was thinking, now, if I do that, what does this do with my mom? And how's my aunt? Okay, doing? so it was growing, but you're like, okay, they're retired and I it was going to require more time. I very much thriving business, but I just wanted the family. And then if one thing went wrong with the family death in the family we have to rearrange the whole office because everybody in the office is going to funerals and spending time with family i had one person working for me (laughs) who was not a member of my family and thank god for her because she would pull all that weight when we had to deal with family issues and things like that um i was taking care of my father who was sick at the time there was just so many different things going on Uh and at the end of the day that wasn't my passion there wasn't my gift was there but I was burning out on it because it was like, I want to help people do this. I don't necessarily want to always do it myself. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that is why I sold the home care business. The hair salon. Let me tell you about the hair care business. It is hard trying to get other people to want to make their money. Isn't O-M-G. it? <laughs> When I have visions, and that's another thing, you got to deal with like-minded people sometimes. Sometimes there's a place for birds of a feather and sometimes opposites attract. You got to figure out what's what. I'm the type of energy, I need people around me who are hungry to chase that vision, hungry to build on their gifts. I can't keep trying to make it happen for you. My hair salon was a booth rental, which I had to learn the difference between commission and booth uh, rent and, and hair salon. So, you know, it was there and it's operating and it's running, but I'm getting frustrated because people coming in looking for mail, mail ain't there. Yeah, that's bad business. And it's frustrating for me and I'm not losing any money because, you know, they're paying me what they have to pay me to be there, but then I want you to be there. <laughs> so I found myself getting frustrated in a venue where I could not do anything about it. I don't do hair. I'm not a barber. I'm not a nail tech, esthetician, none of that. And I was like, this is starting to drain me. So I started thinking about selling it and my lead stylist was ready to buy it. But she was kind of anxious because she didn't do the entrepreneurial part of it. Uh She just did a little bit of the managing and did the hair. So I said, I promise I will teach you everything that you need to know. I was still going to be involved. And she died. Yeah. And after she died, I couldn't do it anymore. But God bless the young lady who had just graduated and gotten her license and she was working next to her and she was teaching the new girl all of the things that it would take to build a thriving business as a stylist. Okay. And she bought it. Oh, that worked out. Worked out just perfectly fine because at that point I was like crushed and I said, oh, okay, so this venture worked and you know, I knew how, I know how to do that now, but you learn a lot from doing businesses like that. So I sold each of them for different reasons, but I really just enjoy seeing people do it for themselves. If you have a job that you enjoy and you're hustling 60 to 80 a week, you know, hours, then that's fine. But if you're doing that and you're miserable for 60 to 80 hours a week, then, you know, let me show you how to take what you're doing for somebody else and do it for yourself if that's what you really want to do. Okay. So, yeah, that's the, I sold them for those reasons. Okay, now you did say um, the home health care business, your family was there, Mm -hmm. and they were retired. Yes. So the business was growing, growing. and the public, I got air quotes, the public pretty much wanted more from you. The home care industry. (laughs) Yeah, because I was on their radar. Our audits were coming back perfect every time. When we had our initial audit, we were told that it would take maybe two days to get our audit done. Uh-huh. Our audit was done in four hours. Oh, wow. So everything Our was... stuff was on point. People were saying, you know, we've never seen the boss come out and actually do the work. And we started getting on the radar of the regulatory system from the state and the government for how we were operating. And they wanted us to do more. And you're like... And I'm uh... thinking, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how long I'm going to do what I'm doing. <laughs> so... so how did that affect 
your family and I heard you say that they were retired. So usually when you retire, you kind of want to do things at your leisure. Otherwise you would have stayed working Mm -hmm. to, okay, now I have to actually work. So I thought that was really nice of you to say, okay, no, take care of, you know, Mm -hmm. your grandma and be retired. How did that work for the family that depended on uh, income? How did you feel as far as when you said, okay, I'm getting ready to sell this. Did you, I'm sure you warned them. All of my family members, all of my upper level management did it voluntarily. My cousin, who was my nursing supervisor, is actually a charge nurse at St. E's. Uh So he could come in at his leisure and do what I needed the nursing supervisor to do. My other cousin, who worked as a nurse aide for me, is primarily a deputy sheriff for the county. So she came in at her leisure for me. Okay. So everyone at that level were doing it because they were helping me and they just wanted to see the business grow for the people who were basically working in the field, seeing the clients Uh I gave, well, they didn't really lose their jobs because when I sold the company, I had the opportunity to go to the new company. That was part of my contract. I was not going to sell the company if the people who were already ready working for me did not have the opportunity to work for the new company. Okay. So no one lost their jobs. Good. Okay. I was wondering about that. And mm-hmm. be like, oh, wow. oh no, I wouldn't have done that to anybody. No, I made sure that the contract stipulated that anyone currently working for me could work for them. Okay. And it worked. And it worked. <laughs> of course, it was a different kind of setup. And a lot of people didn't stay with the new company because the vision was a little different. Um, oh, okay. I was more hands-on. I was a little bit more in tune to the fact that a lot of these people were trying to go to school. I was an advocate for that. If you were trying to go to school, if you had another job, if you had children, I washed clothes for some of my employees. We took kids to school. We kept some of the kids. I wanted it to be family-centered. I I had to remember that the people doing the work were customers, too. Okay. So it was a different kind of setup when we ran it. And we were doing hundreds of visits a week. Um, I had, at one point, almost 100 employees because I had a staffing side as well. I staffed nursing facilities. So my business actually had two parts. I was a staffing company on one side, and the other side I was home care. Okay, so that's that uh, DBA, Mm -hmm. doing business as? No, it wasn't a do. I had Golden Rule home care, and then I had Golden Rule staffing. So it was one company, but we had two divisions. Kim Ham Coaches You was actually my umbrella company doing business as Golden Rule home care. Okay, okay. So when I sold my company, I sold Golden Rule home care. Kim Ham Coaches You was still mine. Okay. And those are things you need to know. That's what I was getting ready to say. So when you have it, and then you do doing business as. Right. So how do you add the doing business as? How many companies can you do under your umbrella? I'm not sure how many companies you can do, but I went to my accountant and said, okay, this is the parent company, but I'm trying to sell home care, so I can't sell Kim Ham Coaches. You can take care of people. So what she did was I had to get separate filing for the business name, and when you register the business with the state Uh they ask you if it's a doing business ass so it registers as a doing business ass so all of my like taxes and business papers had kim ham coaches you okay and the doing business as golden rule home care was a separate entity within that so it's like you have a house and you have all of your utilities but each utility comes in as its own okay so you know you're we're sitting in a room right now. The heat is going. The lights are on. If I want to run water, it's all under one umbrella of this house. But each entity has its own account. Gotcha. That's how it operates. Okay. So if somebody decides, okay, I want to start my business today. Mm-hmm. And you have like the LLC and all those other. How do you know which direction to go? Because I know there are several people, they'll start a business, but theirs is like a non-profit. Then you have the for-profit and, or they just want to have something. You have people that just want to have something and they don't know what direction to go and they're going with the non-profit, the, what was it, 501, 3C and all that other stuff. What's the difference between, well, we know profit and uh, not-for-profit. We know the difference between that because it's right there, Mm -hmm. self-explanatory. But what direction would be the best direction when you're trying to make ends meet? 
there is no one answer to that because you have to know exactly what you want your company to do. Nikki's business, naturally Nikki with the candles, is going to be a nonprofit because she's going to her aim is to help people who are dealing with anxiety issues, chronic pain. So there's a lot of support out there for that. Uh -huh. So if she wanted to go nonprofit, there are so many avenues that she can draw off of to support that. Me, I start a home care business. Unless there's something specific that I'm trying to pull out of that, it doesn't make sense for me to go nonprofit, although I'm saying that there are other people who do that because when you're nonprofit, you can draw money from other entities. You can go out into the community and, and get a lot of support and people are open to tax deductible contributions. It's not that you don't make money, but there are certain stipulations that go with being a nonprofit for profit. 100% of that money coming in that company is up to you. And a lot of times people are not comfortable with that because you really have to like trust that small business for profit owner who's selling like a service uh -huh. like I'm selling because I don't have a product on the shelf. So when you're giving me money, you're expecting to me to, to do what I say I'm going to do with that money. There's no really regulatory process except for you probably heard me say. When you have a corporation and you're running a business and it's yours, you still have accountability. I can't say I have all this money in the bank for this company. I'm just going to go buy some shoes today. Okay. There are rules that go with each interest. And excuse me. Do I get the bail now? Yep. Entity. <laughs> for each entity, there are rules that you must follow. And that is why you heard me say at the end, make sure you have a good accountant. Because that accountant will protect your money and show you what you're allowed to do within that corporation. Filing taxes, staying um, within good standing with the state. There are rules that come with each business entity. You have to know there's uh, S corporations, C corporations, LLCs, partnerships, limited liability companies. There are so many different entities out there. So you have to know what you're doing, what you want to do. And I would say talk to an accountant or an attorney about what structure is going to work best for what you're trying to do. Okay, so if someone wants you to come and speak, how can they contact you? Kim Ham, the go-to girl at att.net is my email or 330-720-3456. One more time. Kim Ham, the go-to girl, and that is T-O, not the number two, at att.net or 330-720-3456. Three, 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 four, now you are on social media. How do we find you? Kim Hamilton. Wait a and I, have, I think I'm Kim Ham, the go-to girl on Instagram. My daughter is setting all of this stuff, stuff up for me because I wasn't on Facebook. And then when I had the interview with Chris Gunther, I'm getting all these views and people are talking to me and I'm, I can't talk to them back. So Nikki set it up for me. Kim Ham, the go-to girl is my Instagram and you can find me at Kim Hamilton on Facebook. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, um, I see that you have you have so much information. You're just full of information with your businesses. Now, my question is, um, did you get all of this information through trial and error, or did you, off the top, go to an accountant and sit down with an attorney when you had the very first vision of having a business? The A lot of it was trial and error, but the accountant, and I, you know, I said this last week, attorneys are great to have. They know the law. They will tell you where your boundaries are. But it was my accountant okay. who watched my money okay. and told me, you know, if you do this, you can lose that. Make sure your accountant has a little bit of background in corporate law, and mine does. But a lot of it, my home care business, I would have to say, I had done home care for so long. Mm -hmm. That's why we were able to get through our audit in four hours. I had been doing that for years by the time I started my business. The home care, I'm sorry, the hair salon I had a stylist who was serious about her business, serious enough to teach me what I needed to know to fill in the gap between visionary entrepreneur and the technical part. So I had people around me for that. When I start other home care businesses or I start uh, hair salons, I'm, I'm good with that. Teaching other people how to be coaches, I'm good with that. So if you come to me with something that we have never done before, I've never helped you start that business, I have to go through the mindset because you have to be ready to trial and error. You have to be ready to do the research. The accountant helped me. Trial and error helped me. What I learned along the way helped me. So that's where most of my knowledge came from for the businesses that I did. But I do start businesses for people and I have no clue 
what your business is behind the scenes. If you come to me and say, I want to start a restaurant, which I've helped people do that, then I start with the governing body. The okay. best answer to that question is go to the governing body. What does the state say you have to do? Um, what are the zoning rules for that? Start with the very basics. And a lot of times people don't do that. I want a restaurant, let's cook. No, you have to know the rules. You have to know who to go to, what the guidelines are. So that's the best answer to that question. Okay, so did you see that it was a need for what it is that you do? Because people were just trying to start a business and, and those business maybe were failing? Within I the found that there year. was a need because people started coming to me asking. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, okay. that's how I learned there was a need. Okay. Okay, so if someone wants to start a business, they can contact you? Yes, they can. At? 330-720-3456 or Kim Ham, the go-to girl at att.net. All righty. I'm loving it. I'm trying to get Rugo to start this cooking business. Uh, look, look, you ain't into it. You know? I don't know, man. I, I've been thinking about it I'm lately. still thinking about that because shrimp I, with the pineapple. Yeah, like. I, went, I went to this one place in, in Cleveland that, that kind of has a following. And I was there for like, I was in Cleveland for a week. Or okay. About eight days, something like that. And I happened to go to this place three different, well, three times during that time I was there. And every time it got progressively worse. What? What? Like it was okay to begin with and then it got progressively worse. And what I noticed was, um, I was like... I could do this. It's like, it's like, like you can do it. Yeah, it was like it was a lack of like quality control. Like it's like uh, quality control, and then like when you have dishes that have to work with other dishes, like you might have like let's say chicken and gravy, but if you got everything on the salt level up here and you using, it, it was this. It was kind of like an inconsistent mess, but um, but I learned a lot from that, and it kind of had me thinking, uh, maybe I should or shouldn't. But it was interesting because I was thinking about something that was said during the time uh, um, about like switching up things that's on your menu. Well, like when you doing the, like when you doing the work and you get in like cool with vendors and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Like sometimes they'll be like, "Hey, I got this over here because somebody else ordered it, but I'll sell it for you to have for half price. You should have a special." You like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, like, sometimes, like, in the cooking business, what I found out was, like, having, like, really good relationships with the vendors it helped you have, like, different experiences. Like, you may have your your main thing, and then, like, all of a sudden, like, they, like, I remember one time I got a, uh, it was a prime rib or something, but the price was, like, I couldn't turn down it. I couldn't turn it down. Like, either I was going to eat it myself or sell it. <laughs> you you was know what I mean? It. But it was either way. I was like, heck, yeah. So, you know, it had a steak special. Wasn't the thing that I natu- naturally did, but it was like one of those things where you can't lose out on doing it a little bit differently at that for that particular thing. Because, again, you kind of you get to know people. They start to like you. They give you stuff that you know, or, or they give you deals based off of what other people didn't do. And they probably if you mess up your order. They do a deal for somebody else. They're just trying to get rid of stuff. You know what I okay. mean? Because it's all a perishable market, mm-hmm. you know, for the most part. When you talk about meats and stuff like that. You know, so I mean that was I mean, that was the thing for me was like there was some improvisation that was caused by just having a, a luck of the opportunity to be able to say, Oh, here's this one thing, which provided me an avenue for people to say, Okay, this is what's on the menu, but this is what he can do for you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So it, it gave me an opportunity to like, okay, here's this special. Nothing I'm going to keep on the menu, but something I'm going to keep until it's gone. Right. You know what I mean? So like through those little experiences. Oh, so is that where they say that's a promotional yeah, item? It can be a promotional <laughs> you were like, item. I liked it. Or is this, you know, like when you see a place, they, sometimes places got running specials like wings on Tuesday, you know, or whatever it is, or pizza wins, whatever. So, but sometimes it's just like, oh, I got a great deal on, like, sometimes I got a great deal on this. And okay. so now this is what we going to have. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, kind of like if you, like, and, and I think that was, like, cause I, I took a lot of heart in what she was saying about, like, um, the business aspect of it. Because when you, like, doing, like, everything is really tough. It's really tough. Like, when you're doing everything, like, like, from 
going to pick up the stuff to go on like the actual like all that kind of stuff now i will say in my situation um i didn't go into business like it wasn't like i it happened <laughs> you know oh, what i mean oh it wasn't like, planned it, kinda, it just it, happened it, it kind of happened like i didn't have a job i went to this one place to go get something to eat and they was like, uh, I was like, where the guy at? And they was like, ain't no guy. It's like, oh, here's my Kind of like what you was saying. You know? As far as the salon, like, what? You're looking for this person yeah. and not there. Okay. Yeah. So I said, here's my resume. Not as, like, I had cooked in the past, but that cooking wasn't on my resume. Like, you know. Well, you had your master's degree and everything on the resume? Yeah, yeah, not you know, with cooking. <laughs> none, none, none of that was on there. Just, just the other stuff. And, it, and the guy called me back up to, like a couple days later and was like, oh, okay. Well, you know. And I, he never asked me anything about cooking. He just said, you don't know if you can or if you can't. <laughs> so <laughs> and he said, okay. just like that, you know what I mean? And so it like left open a, like an avenue to just kind of do like a lot of uh, exploration and different things like that. But it was like, for me, it wasn't, It's I guess it's different when you when you have a vision of what you want to do. And then when you just seek an opportunity to, to be involved in something. And that's where I was at. And my thing was like, yeah, I didn't take into consideration none of that stuff because what you were saying about like the regulations and all that, ultimately that was his responsibility. You know what I mean? I just had to just be a good homemaker in a sense. Okay. Like like for example, they come in, they come in and check, you know, the uh, health department comes in and check the stuff. Hey, as long as you pass it, so what you gotta do to pass? A couple things. Have have your stuff in your freezer and refrigerators labeled, have your uh your temperature checks on the uh, on the refrigerator. Keep so you just learned all that stuff. Just well, th- th- those was like the basics for like you ain't want to kill nobody. You right. Know? <laughs> like, don't kill the nobody. basics for keeping That's people alive. You know what I mean? Like those was like the things. Not like, that jitty well, old turkey. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's like at home, you you throw something in the freezer. You might label it first. I know I do. You know, depending on what it is. Yeah. You know? put I the mean, date like on it, depending yeah. on uh, depending on how quickly I plan on getting back to it. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. I'm like, oh, you gonna only be in there for a short, short while because you use delicious, but um, but then the, the other, then it was just the aspect of like trying to like at the place I was at, I had to do a lot of different things outside of cooking, like bounce, like uh, <laughs> oh, you just doing everything, uh, yeah, social work, uh, um. I guess social work counseling, a whole bunch of different stuff in this place. You know what I mean? Cooking outside of cooking, outside of cooking. Yeah, so you I, did just, it. Okay. I had to learn how to do first aid. You know, well, I had I knew how to do first aid, but I actually had to put it into practice in this place. So it was. It was I uh, guess you would if something happened in the kitchen. You yeah, might, you're like, yeah. Oh, come here, let me click. Yeah, but it wasn't. It wasn't like kitchen related incidents. Nobody was choking on a chicken nugget or nothing like that. It was like his kitchen. Was, he like, did the kitchen at a uh, bar. Yeah, you know? it was like so. I can only oh, imagine. I got That's a, funny. Somebody bleeding all over the place. Universal precautions, everybody. Ah. Out the way. <laughs> you know, there's nothing to see here. That is interesting. Yeah. And then so. After all that, he did audition for a Master Chef. Yeah, you know? I wish that didn't go anywhere. But I, I hey, saw it. it's interesting though, just to walk in and then yeah, use the whole, your the resume. Whole, don't got nothing to do with cooking, and then bam, here you go. Yeah, the whole experience of it though, because it was it was different than what I thought. It was like all, all these people when you walk into like it was a hotel. We went in Cleveland and and did it, and so when you walk in, it's just like. All these other people who have a passion for something that they make. Some of it is a family recipe that they've always mm. made. For me, it was just something I picked up a, like a couple months ago and thought it was really good. You know what I mean? So it was just like, I was like, I'll do this, you know, which was a, uh, it was a uh, pasta dish, linguine dish with, with spinach and um, um, and chicken breast and uh, was it sun-dried tomatoes. So that was like, that was what I did. And I was just talking about this yesterday. It was this guy next to me he came with this little one of them baby roasters, right? And a Puerto Rican dude. Man, he had the coldest roast ever. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that roast was so good. It was so good. It was that roast is probably one of the best things I ever ate. And if and if he advanced and I fell because now if he didn't go, I'm upset. Because his roast was better than my stuff. Uh, I, I ain't gonna lie to you about that. My my stuff was good, but that roast was superior. That roast was like awesome. And then it was some things that I was just like, I don't even know what that is. 
I thought it was for the people on the master chef. Yeah, they didn't... I thought it was a donut, and here it was a stuffed chicken breast. But, ah! <laughs> you know, but it was this like it was this. I mean, but the thing about it was everybody was. In, in that in that thing it seemed like everybody was giving the best of themselves because it's like, you know, you just going out there and you like, hey, here's this creation that I made for you to indulge to try that something like maybe like it was one lady she you know obviously somebody told her a lasagna was good mm-hmm. I don't know how they could have told her that just just by looking <laughs> at it I I couldn't see how they could have told her that so do y'all taste it yeah you can taste other people's stuff afterwards like if you want to share yeah no oh, hey. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like a little, like, cause, cause, cause it's all people that's foodies. It's like, so it's like, yeah, try it. You want to try this? Go ahead, try it. You know, blah blah. You know, like it's everybody. Like it's like everybody's passion is like, if if you make food and you just make food for like just people, or when you make when you entertain, you make food or whatever. You want people to indulge in it. So it's like this whole community of people who are like, yeah, because I think this is really good, and I would like you to try some. You know what I mean? So it's like it was a it was a even though I never met any of those people, never talked to any of those people ever since in that moment in time. It was, it was a just, bonding moment. Yeah. It was yeah. a really co- a communal mm-hmm. type of experience. Okay. Well, Kim, I got it. I want I know you got somewhere to be. I just wanted to say one more thing. Yes. If I could, because the term passion keeps coming up a lot. Uh huh. And what I do want to emphasize is yes, it's good to have a passion. But sometimes you have to follow your gift and your strength to bring out that passion. A lot of times we'll say, follow your passion, follow your passion. And that's fine because I follow mine, Uh but I follow it using my gifts and my strengths. And if you learn that your gift or your strength takes you a different way to get you towards what you feel your passion is, don't be afraid to follow it because your gift and your strength will carry you through because that's what comes to you naturally. That is what's been given to you innately so i just wanted to emphasize that sometimes you have to start with your gift or your strength to discover your passion or to get to your passion okay i was getting ready to ask you do you have any i was like, I'm like <laughs> do you have any last words because i'm like i don't want to hold you up no, i'm good are you good I'm okay good. all right and we gonna get ready to shop talk and all that good stuff but uh the life coaching i gotta get you to come back to talk about the life coaching and how to become a life coach because that's out there yes. that's something that i've been interested in mm-hmm. and i was like oh this is good i can do that yay let me talk about this uh <laughs> but there's steps to becoming a life coach and not just walking out the door and be like hey how you doing i'm a life coach <laughs> <laughs> I, and boy if we was live you'd be able to see what i'm doing here i'm pointing <laughs> books like how you become a life coach like what um what steps you need to take and all that good stuff. But we, uh, I wanted to get you here about business and today's topic is minding your business. We're going to talk again about the life coaching thing. Got to get you back. I'll let you guys know that Kim Hamilton will be starting a podcast. So that will be coming soon. So keep your eyes and ears open for that. Um, if you would like to book Kim Hamilton, this is how you can reach her. Kim Ham, the go-to girl at att.net. 330-720-3456. And I wanted to reiterate as far as like the different businesses that you had and what you're doing now where you said you offer something, you don't have anything on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Now that's similar to what I have going on, nothing on the shelf. So I'm just selling me. Right. And it's like, okay, I got my little LLC. We'll be doing now. What is what is going on? And I do have a fundraiser coming up. Shameless plug. I don't even know if that's shameless because it's mm-hmm. me anyway. Uh-uh. <laughs> Advertisement. Yes, 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 yes. Where it is uh, for a fundraiser, and this is this scholarship that I'm doing this year is for adults returning to school. Last year I had, like I said, um, the two young ladies that were going to school, and no, you just can't go and drop your uh, name in the box. I and get the money once we pull your name. That's not how that works. Uh, the way that the scholarship works is you have to be registered. It has to be presented. And then that's how you'll get it. But this one I wanted to do for the adults returning to school because some adults kind of like messed up their grants and all that other stuff and probably got loans when they were a lot younger and decide, hey, I want to return to school. I'm looking for something different. I actually met somebody at your event, which was really good. And she came and she gave me a hug. I didn't even know her. Mm -hmm. And she was over to the side. She said, you know what? That's really good because she was a a CNA certified nurse and nurses assistant. And she wanted to go to nursing school. 
but she could kind of like blue all of her grants when she was younger. Then she got injured and then she got loans that she didn't take out. So when she went back to school, they were saying how much it would actually cost. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said, you know, we want to do it for adults returning to school. You have people who had children and they said, okay, I'm going to stop. And I'm going to raise my children. Okay, now they're grown and gone, but I would like to go back to school, but I don't want to be bombarded with all of these loans. And how am I going to pay this back? Oh, it'll take a lifetime. Where we, Shop Talk with Mel, can actually assist and help you, even if it's just purchasing your books. You know what I mean? Because that stuff gets expensive. So that's why I wanted to do it for the adults. And that lady said she wanted to go back to nursing school. I'm like, go for it. I get it. And then when you get, reach a certain age, you're like... How many years I got to pay this bag? I don't even know if I'm still be on this earth. You know what I'm saying? So just trying to give back to the community. So this wine sip is on December the 2nd, 3 o'clock. Anybody that knows me, we start at 3 o'clock. Not 3.30, 3.15. We ain't setting up tables. None of that. Uh, ah! If it's, we ain't setting up no tables at no 3 o'clock. You're not going to sit there and talk about your event is at 3 o'clock and I'm coming at 3 o'clock and people walking around and putting tablecloths on the tables. I can't. That stuff drives me nuts. 3 o'clock when i say it starts at three o'clock it starts at three o'clock that's how i am with eating you ever notice that mm -hmm. any event they be like oh can i eat you know if it's two or three people there this whole time oh yeah we started at three mm -hmm. those are we're not gonna wait till the people come get your life okay so three to five thirty starts exactly at three we getting it going music fun just anything that you need blood pressure check we got you covered right there what i won't be doing though is uh, finger sticks. I won't do that unless it's sign and release. We'll see. But those uh, slides, the strips, test strips, they cost a lot. A lot. Yeah, they, yeah, they, <laughs> they cost a lot. So we're not going to do uh, the uh, blood sugar checks. But trust and believe, if you have high blood pressure, we'll have somebody doing it manually. Um, also the automated ones. But I don't really trust the automated ones. That's just me and how I am. Remember the time when uh, you saw me? It was a trouble. You was like, Mel, you a nurse? What you doing? I couldn't stand I don't like to get dirty, y'all. Y'all don't understand. And you're like, what? <laughs> yes, I, I was like, that. I know. This is so weird. It's like it's funny how like life just changed. You're like, wait a minute, what? I was doing hair. What you mean? So I feel him. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like how you go from one extreme to the other. But anyway, back to this um the mingle with medicine wine sip. And the reason we did the mingle with medicine is because people that are in the medical field honestly don't really mingle with each other. You'd be like, okay, I'm at work. I'm tired. Bye. See ya. Done. So let's have some fun. 3 to 5.30. And when I say 5.30, 5.30, I mean that. Okay, 5.30. Because that other 30 minutes is the cleanup. Yes. <laughs> so it does start exactly at 3 o'clock. Come have some fun. Kick it with us. Laugh. Dance. Do all the good stuff. Right down there at the uh, YWCA in the historic lobby where uh, Kim actually speaks every third Third Sunday. Sunday, 4 o'clock. Okay. Historical lobby, historical lobby, the YWCA. Now, it, is it free admission? Yes. Okay. The admission is free. The admission is free. See what I'm saying? Get educated for free. And then the, uh, the Mingle with Medicine is also free admission. And we take donations. That's what we're going off of, donations for this scholarship. So please come out and enjoy. Rogo. Yes. Now, we got to talk about Thanksgiving. Yes, we do. Yes, yes, yes. Now, we talk about this food. Mm -hmm. well, let's talk about this Thanksgiving. How was your Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. It was all right. It was cool. I cooked. I, I cooked. Everybody liked it. I was kind of, everybody liked the food. I said liked it because I liked it. I liked it to say liked it. Liked it. That's your favorite thing? Liked nah. it. Yeah, everything was good, man. I was in charge of the turkey, greens, macaroni, cheese, dressing, and... um. That's the whole meal. Had, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> much the, the staples. I was in charge of those things, yeah. Okay, did you try something new? No, nah, it was uh, very traditional. Okay. Yeah. Very traditional. Did well, you my together? wife is from Nigeria, and she made, like, uh, this one fish dish or whatever. How was and, it? And uh, some yams. Well, it's something I've had before. It's it's good. It's Actually, it's catfish, and I, I get it from this place in Columbus, the fish. Okay. And, uh, so you, you know, they have huge catfish. So I, you know, buy that and, it, you know, it's all cut up and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it, she also made this dish called porridge, but it's not like. Porridge? Like it's Goldilocks not, porridge? It, it, it's called porridge, like Goldilocks porridge, but it's not. It's like, a, um, it has, um, 
the uh, it's a Nigerian yam in it uh, that's white actually. And when she when I when, I remember when she first came over over to my to uh, to me or whatever. Um, not over from Africa to me, but by way of Africa we met. And so uh, I said, yeah, I got yams in there. You're thinking like I had the yams that, you know, like, she's like, what the hell is this? She's like, <laughs> she's pretty much like, yeah, we don't eat these ones. Like, this is not like, this is like not. The orange yams? Yeah. They was like, yeah, we don't eat these ones. And then I seen the one that they eat and I'm like, oh, looks like a miniature tree trunk, you know. And it's called it's yams. Big. Like they like. Oh, or is this the porridge? This is the yam that's <laughs> cut. They cut the. You know, it's like they make the. They make the porridge with the thing, but it's not like a porridge. Porridge. It's not like that when she said it. It doesn't. Don't think of like a bowl of gruel. It's not yeah, that. You know, it's I'm like, sitting there goldie yeah, I'm there with it's this not porridge. Like that. It's more like a, like the like the like the yam is like a dumpling kind of thing. Like, but it's 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 hard for me to describe. But it has shrimp in it and everything like that. Oh, and so I had to buy I bought some fresh like fresh fresh sh- shrimp with the heads and all that stuff on there and all that with the heads. Yeah, like the whole body shrimp, like they were just caught, like Gubba, Gubba, Gubba Gump shrimps. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we had the traditionals, nothing over the top. Yeah. At all. Well, they they did have this one little boy, a little child. He end up slapping the aunt because he ain't like her dressing, and that that. She had depression charges on Thanksgiving. How old was the nephew? I think he was like 11 or 12. 11? So, I mean, really, would and he you. Slapped her he for slapped bad her dressing. for bad dressing. I, somebody put him up to legitimate. it. Legitimate. Look, what you say? Legitimate. 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 <laughs> you got one time to do it right all year. Like, hey, you didn't do yeah, it. You didn't do it right. Because some people, you know, sometimes, like if you iffy on what your recipe is and. You might need because this is a this is really one of the biggest. This is probably like the hardiest meal that people have had since 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 summer. You know Thanksgiving. You know okay. what I mean. I mean not to say you haven't ate well before, but this is like everything. This is the first meal with everything. You know what I mean? Like all of the wintery kind of things. You know all those heavy heavier kind of things. You know, and sometimes if you ain't really up on it, you might have to do a test run like a little like about two a weeks mu- before. Oh, two weeks before, saying? something like that. So, do you eat breakfast on Thanksgiving? No. <laughs> Why? Because I'm busy. Usually, I'm cooking. Okay. So, so I, I you know, so I, I don't, you know, with the, the thing I, I get hollered at a lot of times is that people be like, not that I take a long time, but sometimes I take naps in between. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, like, like for example, I was like, my my wife cooked. She went first, and she takes such a long time in the kitchen that I didn't want to work side by side with her. So you want the kitchen by yourself? Horrible. Yeah. So it was like, let's say she started at eleven. And she got done. It had to be like about three o'clock. Wait a minute. What time? What time is y'all Thanksgiving dinner? Eleven a.m. The yep. eleven at p.m. the day before into the a.m. Well, she, it's like, so it's oh, okay. Because I'm like, wait, yeah. that's it. What time do you guys eat? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Okay. See, I, I was, it was somewhere in between two and four. I think it was like three o'clock or something. Do you? But eat I all was time? actually late because I. I had How this, you late with the, the main food was stuff? Done. No, the food was done. They, I guess I, I said, "Come and get it," and I went to sleep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then, I, like, by the time, but when I went to sleep, when I said, when I called him and said the food was done, that was nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So, did you carry your food over? I carried nothing because I they was. They came sleeping. and got it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was sleeping, and then I ended up getting a text message like at like two forty one saying like, "Where are you?" And I'm like, at what time were y'all supposed Wait. to start? Or was they it no started? Time? Listen, they started without the like, turkey, the macaroni. No, they had it. They all came and got it. They came oh, and got it. Oh, that's things. silly. But I was just I was asleep. Okay, now. Did you, Kim? Y'all start on time? Yes, ma'am. See that? That's what I, I can't I, understand. I just, they start on time. I just wasn't there. And what I can't understand. See, that's a good thing. So in this room, we got uh, on time starters. Is yeah. that a word? Well, is I, that a sentence? On time starters. On time we starters. We just made it one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on time starters. Because I'm sitting there wondering, like y'all knew, just like you said, you had all year to get this ready. Yeah. You said we're gonna eat it this time, and the stuff is not done. It got a problem. Yeah. See, and my thing, my thing is like the speed in which people work around me. So, like sometimes, like I gotta know my my. 
I got to know what I can live with. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I'm like, why is it taking you that long to chop that? Like, it shouldn't take that long. Wait, 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 wait. You know what I'm saying? You should be done. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you get people, I'm going to tell somebody to chop up vegetables for you. And it'd be like, and it's like, okay, I understand it's a lot of vegetables because I'm making all this food, you know? But at the same time, there's no reason that it should be. The, well, some people don't have knife skills and stuff like that. So when you get a person that's chopping, let's say, celery, and they start to slice it like this, you know, off top, you didn't get the wrong person to help you. Hilarious. For all these business wannabes, that is the manager's job right there. Yeah. Why is it taking so long? Do yeah. you have what you need? Let's make this vision into a dinner. He is yeah. a manager. And that's a, you see how yes. point it is? Yeah, you are the was, dream uh, planner. That's yeah. it. Because it's like a lot of times I'll just be like, listen, I'll just... <laughs> I'll just prep <laughs> even your stuff. I'll prep your stuff because I know I get done with it quicker. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. But but it's like, but but it, like it's like the the speed in which like I, I just and I, I got I know that too about me. So I know I got to like back away. You know I know I, like it's been times in, in my just in life where like if it was my son in sports or something like I was like oh he he's gonna hate sports if I'm involved in it. I get it back. I get it back out. So you know when to be like when to hold them, when to fold them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you really gotta say that. You know, like like it was they, they, it, like when you go into seminar or like trainings and stuff. There's like one rule that people want to have is step up, step back. You know, so yeah. Because like, I, I know, like, like, like in management, like when it's terrible when somebody is dominate something. You know what I mean? And then when you don't want to also piss off your help either. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you know, so it's like okay, the, and especially like a holiday thing because it's like it's the holiday. Yeah, Part ticking of it is, off your help. I had somebody that told me. <laughs> look, speaking of that, I made some chili. It wasn't North Thursday. I made some chili. Now I'm sitting there chilling. We having a good old time. I'm making this stuff. And you know what they told him? No, what he told me? Mm-hmm. He was like, oh, my mom does this to her chili. Oh, my mom does that. Thank God I wasn't dating him. I feel bad for his little girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, this ain't your mom's chili. Mm-hmm. I'm going to need you to go home. <laughs> and get yeah, get your mama's chili. chili. And you ain't got to have none of this. So on Thanksgiving and cooking a meal, not even just Thanksgiving and cooking a meal and being married, if you know that Something is being prepared differently than what you're used to. Do you tell your spouse? Or your significant other? And this goes both okay, ways. This is this is I would say like this. Like, okay, like my wife, she'll make eggs and she'll use like those jams I was telling you about. But she'll also put like like a lot of egg food has a lot of fish in it. Like it, like fish for eggs in my opinion. Fish? fish for no reason. Like it's like smoked <laughs> fish, it's, you know, it's like it's all like whatever. But I don't like her eggs just because I ain't really all that keen on the taste of them. But the way she scrambled them, like she scrambled them really hard. You know what I mean? And so it's like a whole bunch of like little yellow pebbles on the plate. You know, I don't like, I just don't like how. Did you tell her? Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's good. Did she receive it? I I mean, she makes them. I was like, hey, you don't got to make me it. Well, for herself. Oh, okay. So she received it. Because I don't really care for them. You know what I mean? But. You say little yellow pebbles all over that. They, they, they scramble too hard. Yeah, they scramble too hard. You got a, a plate full of popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be eggs. What is that? You know what I mean? But you know what I'm talking about. Like when you first start out cooking the eggs when you're little and you be like, oh, I got to make sure it's done done. And it'd be like super done done. <laughs> you know? I don't know. I I didn't really, you know. But I just, I told her. I was like, hey, yeah, I'm I'm cool with that. You can have all of them. All of that. And it didn't pose a Enjoy it didn't your pose native issue. food. All of it. That, that, particular, that particular dish. That particular dish. Yeah. And I just, you know. Okay. Yeah, I no problem with saying that. That's a good thing. Yeah, because so, there's a couple things I know I don't like. Like, I don't like beef kidneys. What is like that? A beef kidney? A, a cow kidney. A cow kidney. Don't like Who it. Who eating that? That is the first time I've ever heard of that. Right. Yeah. As a meal. Well, it's like, <laughs> right. they do is like, like, it's like a lot of like, they may have like, everything is a soup. You know what I mean? Like for the <laughs> most part, everything is a stew kind of thing. And then, then it's like rice and stuff like that. Like they have this gel off rice thing, which is good. But in some cases, like some of the other dishes just have like chopped up, like almost how, you know, uh, African-Americans may do like giblet gravy. You know what I mean? But it's like, you know, it's... You know, but it's not a gravy. It's like this, whatever. He said giblet. We say giblets. Giblets? Giblet. Giblets? Is it? I don't know. Take it to the cloud. Ah, take it to the cloud. We about to look at, look at that. I don't know. But the point is, is that like, 
I like liver. And it's a it's along the lines of the taste of liver, but it's a lot more metallic-y and the texture is like more jelly kind of like like and I added a texture through me. I was like, yeah, I'm I'm cool on this. And I and it's weird because I'm usually not a texture like texture doesn't really bother me, but in that it does. Yeah. And it's this other stuff. I don't even know the name of it, but it's like a it's like a um I don't even know. It's like it's like grits. It's like grits that were not cooked. See what like, I'm saying? Like, He's a foodie though, so you're gonna taste and uh-huh. test stuff. I, yeah, I, tried I it. ain't tried none of that. We didn't talk about some kidneys it, on. Because it's I'm like good. she pour in milk. Like literally, I mean not even milk. Water, ice, and then this stuff. Then this like ice. like Yeah. And she'll eat it like like it's the best thing ever. And I'm like, I tried it. I it tastes like raw, it tastes like uncooked cream of wheat. Like just little granules in in water, oh, well. you know. But that's what, that's what, and then there's this other kind of pudding thing that that, that, that tastes kind of that smells chemi- like taste and smells kind of chemically like. And I was like, Nah, I'm cool. I can't, do it. you know. But those are the three things that I'm like, Yeah, I, I you, you know, do that on that way. Yeah. Let's talk Black Friday real quick. Oh. How do you feel about Black Friday I, on I, on Thanksgiving? I don't like any. I don't like the fact that any of the stores are open on the holidays. I did. I just don't. Okay. You know, I, I didn't go. I didn't go. How, how do you feel about Black Friday on Thanksgiving? I, if the stores are open and people want to go, I don't have an issue with that. I, I just can't see me personally wanting something badly enough to stand out in line or interrupt Thanksgiving dinner for. If I needed it that badly, I got it Wednesday before, or I'll get it Friday, Saturday, or Sunday after. I don't get the whole Black Friday hype thing. Okay. <laughs> I, look, I like the Black Friday hype thing. I like because it's just packed. But I liked it when it was like 2 in the morning when it started. And, and not when the outside actual... in the middle of well, the well, night. Well, what did I say? I liked it. Like I liked said. it. Like you did. Oh, it's the, the spirit is transferring. Ding, ding, uh, ding. Yeah, I like the Black Friday. Did I do it right now? I like Black oh, Friday. I like the... Know. Black Friday in it. Yeah, black, okay. Black yeah, we'll Friday in it. it. We'll yeah, accept we'll, it. Yes, like okay, we'll go with that one. Yeah. But I don't like, uh, like you said, on the holiday, I think that, to me, I just feel like, even though the stores want to make money, I honestly feel like now they just like mark stuff up. That's just my thoughts. Uh-huh. Mark stuff up just to put it down at the regular price if you think you're really getting a deal. It's like, mm-mm. And then I found out, like, if you have American Express card, you get the Black Friday prices and you can go at any time. Mm. Right. Uh, so how about that? Off that? They gonna get that interest. Right. So they gonna get it anyway. Yeah, right. So right. I, 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 I mean, my, my, more, my, my, the thing for me is more or less a, uh, is more or less the family is being taken out of everything. Yes. You know that's why I don't like it. Like, 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 like she was saying, like leaving a dinner to go get it to, to go shop or whatever. Now I understand there's certain occupations that have that have to work. But I just kind of think like I remember being a person where it was like, oh, it's Christmas. If they ain't get those those batteries you needed, if you ain't get gas the day before or whatever, like you was just out of luck until the store opened again. You know what I mean? It was right, certain, like, right. And it was a certain um, peacefulness across the land, if you will. It <laughs> you was, know what I mean? You know what I would I, mean, I would say I would have to agree with you on that yeah. because it was like that. If you went out, you was like the only car. It was like two cars. Like yeah. your store is open. Uh, I think they need to bring it back. And I like Thanksgiving because of the family and the friends and all that other stuff. I think them putting out Christmas hall Christmas decorations prior to Thanksgiving is team too much. Well they, well, they put them oh, out before yeah. Halloween. That's way too much. It is. I, it's like yeah. everything is commercialized yeah. now. It's all about money. Most of what we're doing every day is money centered. Not family centered. And right. you know, people ask questions about what's happening to the family in America. Money. Money. Greed, immediate gratification, and, like and that. that's it. And to me, I'm like, we need to bring it on back. Bring it on back. Well, Let me get with these. Go ahead. You got something no, to say? I, I want to talk- say, I think it's going to happen. You think it's going to happen? Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Let me tell y'all about the little hot topics real quick. Well, Floyd Mayweather, he he Black Friday did. <laughs> yeah, Friday did. I said it. Okay. Listen, he spent five point three million dollars in a jewelry store for Black Friday. Wow. So how much jewelry did he have? Well, who was it for? Him. Which brings me to my next point. Let's talk, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> 
men who wear all this jewelry. Now, I know some and y'all know some. Uh And in your mind, you sit there thinking all these rings and everything. Yeah. Is that a turn on or turn off with a man putting on jewelry? I can't answer if it's a turn on or turn off. I I just think like, okay, like for me. Like I remember. Let me give you the visual. Okay, all right. Okay, here, here's the visual. So, boom, you with your boo, y'all chilling on the dresser. Like I know, like my jewelry, but on the dresser, he got like these big. Look at me, I got so much stuff on me. These big gaudy rings, and they all sitting up. You got like mm-hmm. five or six chains, and I know y'all got somebody in your head. Uh-huh. He got these gold rim glasses, and he putting all these rings on after he get dressed with all of this stuff. And he putting on his neck. He like I'm about to kill him with this one. Put his his chains mm. on and his gaudy rings on. That's too much. And that's how I feel that's like too much. Because I know how long it takes for me to put my little jewelry on. Yeah. So I'm just imagining like, ugh. But go ahead. I was gonna say like just talking about that was like when I was getting married and stuff like that. Like th- this ring I have now was not the ring that I originally had. Like the reading I originally had was this like silver, and it was it was funny because my mom said it looked like a uh, like a boat or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Just, and then I started to look at other guys' rings and stuff, and I would see like like it would be some people had like these really nice rings, and then like when I seen like these kind of like middle middle class American dudes, you know what I mean, with their ring, they would have like tungsten. Like it was it wasn't like a it wasn't a precious metal. Well, I don't know if you want to call that. A, it, for for sake of the argument of today's, I'm going to say it wasn't a precious metal like okay. gold or silver or something like that. It was just a heavy, you know, metal or whatever. So, I mean, I, I started to look at that and I was just like, and I and I got it because I mean, lockdown is lockdown. No matter what the <laughs> what the bars is made out of, you know what I mean. But um, but the thing was was that like I I, I looked at that and I was like, well. Because my wife may mention she's in a high school picture of me or something. She's like, you used to wear chains and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, like one, you know, or something like that or whatever. But like now, like this thing I have now, she made this. You know what I mean? So that's like I not, wear that, that's, you know, that's, that's like, nice. yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. But, but so, so that's like. That's a bead bracelet, not yeah, like. But, but see, but the, the thing was, I just seen something on this. They were talking about like how like men's men's jewelry fashion may not be so much the golds and all that stuff because of like. There being a level of conservatism, conservatism, with people, um, double, <laughs> double ring there. But but the point was, it was like you know you got your leathers, you got your twines, you got all these other like not like like I don't know. Some people might use the shells. I, I think that kind of passed a little bit, but uh-huh. you know whatever. But the point was was like there's this broad spectrum of different things you can do outside of like those like you know um, really expensive pieces. I ain't feeling the 1988, 89 jewelry. Oh, I just got a visual laid up on the dresser. Uh Like this show dude, he dressed up and he decorated, decorated. Decorated. That's the word. Not accented. Right. Decorated. Decorated. Yeah. Like (laughs) that's a, it's a turn off for me. How about you? To me, that's like, you're trying to be a status symbol. If you're, it has to be tasteful. I can see one piece being distasteful. It depends on how you're, how you're adorning it. If you're just wearing this to try to make me think you have a lot of money and it's all wrapped around your arms and your neck, that's a turn off to me. You don't have to do all of that to be presentable. I think women do that too, though. People, yeah, people do that. When you wear a ring bigger than your hand, I mean, what is the point in doing that? And you can't even really do, how, how can you function? Because I think you'll be so concerned with damaging it. Validation, gratification, and control. Those are the three things I focus on whenever I'm coaching anybody. Are you trying to make yourself feel worthy? Are you trying to feel gratification? Or you want somebody to appreciate who you are and what you have? Or are you just trying to create a sense of control over your inner self? Why do you feel you have to have 40 bracelets on your arm and 50 or necklaces around your neck, regardless of whether they are gold, silver, beaded, shelled. What are you doing for with this? Sometimes you have, I mean, you look in the mirror and say, okay, I'm going here. I'm not trying to go there. Just like what I have on today. I was going to funerals. Mm-hmm. So I had to dress for where I was going. But I, I was just coming here. Why would I be dressed like this and nobody's going to see me anyway? <laughs> I mean, yourself, some, I guess. Sometimes, but but I don't have to do that because uh-huh. myself, 
is a hoodie and some jeans. <laughs> you understand? Sometimes you have to look at your ensemble and why am I wearing this? Is it appropriate for the occasion? Am I trying to impress somebody? Jewelry is just a small part of a bigger picture when it comes to that. Is this a status symbol or do you just feel good about yourself wearing it? If you feel good looking like that, it doesn't matter what I think. All right. Good answer. <laughs> interview. Fur coat or no fur coat. And for an interview? And listen, I ain't making this stuff you up. You mean a regular interview? A regular interview We're for a job. In Alaska. Oh, no. No Alaska. fur coat. <laughs> yeah, no fur yeah. coat. Yeah, I think it depends on the climate you're in. It doesn't? Okay. Yeah. That that was legit. It was, this happened. It was a question, too. Fur coat or no fur coat to a job interview? And, and, and all of us have been managers and are still. Uh -huh. If someone came into, <laughs> if somebody came in that you were interviewing, see, listen, I'll probably be like, excuse me. I, I will have to like leave out and just bust out laughing. But if somebody came in, your interview came in, your 10 o'clock arrived uh -huh. and they came in with a fur coat. Yeah. First thing to go through your mind. Is that you can never err on dressing up. Okay. That's a good answer. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Well, I don't know where you're coming from or where you're going to, so maybe you're not wearing it for me. You're wearing it for you. Okay. Me, I'd be like, I'll be right back. I'm going and I'm rolling. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm coming back. Oh, nice to meet you. So, uh -huh. now, my first impressions are everything. Uh -huh. And they're interviewing you as we are interviewing them. But I know if I would have saw a... If I was at like a, a fashion store or something like yeah. that, I'd be like, okay. But... Just somebody coming in with a fur coat, I'd be like, I don't know. I, I, but th this is funny. I know of of a person, and this happened. Yeah, I know of a person didn't get a, a get, didn't get a job because of the car they drove. Now that's ridiculous to me. That's a little different. That's ridiculous to me. Somebody actually asked the question: Should I wear this fur coat? To me, if you have to ask the question, don't, because you already know that. Yeah, and it wasn't that they drove a bad car. They drove a nice car. And that was the problem. And I found out too, to piggyback on that, that if you, sometime if you go to jobs uh -huh. and you look too nice, you won't get the job. Yeah. That's nuts. You know nuts. what I learned once? I was out um, with business associates and there was this one guy there and I was a saltaholic. So I, the meal came and it sat in front of me and I picked up my salt shaker and he said, if I was interviewing you, you would not get a job. And I said, why? He said, because you salted that food without tasting it first. And and people, they say you that. You never know how people are thinking. But I never forgot that. He was like, see what it is before, before you, you go know what to do with it. And that's that's good. Now, even though for me, I'm going to salt my food. Ah. <laughs> but I understood the concept because some people just dive in. And I did learn something from that, even though I wasn't on a job interview and we were all peers. Uh -huh. But I, I, you never pay attention to things like that. When you're on an interview, people are looking at more than just what walked in. And maybe that's why the fur coat question was, I don't know where you're going or where you're coming from, but by the time I sit and talk to you, I don't know if you have a fur coat mentality <laughs> or if you really know what this I'm person going to be fun or yeah. what? I'm going to hire them because they're going to be fun. Can't wait to see what they're wearing yeah. tomorrow. What's, what's under this fur coat? So that's why I had to think about yeah. whether and, or not it would be an issue. And I actually got a job because, I, I, it's a true story, true story. I went to interview, I was like, how old was I? 1920, and I went to interview at Arby's with a three piece suit on, and I got the job just because of that. And but I think that that's good because that's uh, how you're supposed to dress for an interview, that's what we were taught. Yeah, but I mean, that was that's what I was like. I was clean. that's better than it some was, hoodie and some like, jeans. You like, was clean, you was clean. Like, they was like, like, he about to be a like, manager. Like, I was like, I'm here, I was like, I'm here for my interview, and the lady was like, oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, yeah, like it was just a formality. It was the, the you know, because she always talked about that. I think that's like, awesome, though, and I think that that's what we need to bring yeah. things back to. But, but the thing was, is me wearing a three piece suit to a art to an Arby's interview might have been the equivalent of somebody wearing a fur coat to a not you know, not with no snow on the ground. Well, I mean, I'm it, just saying. As a matter of fact, this was in it was September. Right this, this was, yeah, it was pinch yeah, right it was too. Like black, it was black. It was you like had a white. Steve Harvey suit on? No, this was. I'm ah, joking. Right here, but you was the, ready. The royal blue uh, underneath. Man. But see, you Woo! know what? Listen, I, I would have hired you. You know why I would have? Wish you wish you could have fit it today. <laughs> yeah, wish, I, wish I could fit that today. I'll put it on. Just a little time safe. 
But I would have hired you on that alone. You know mm -hmm. why? Because I would have said, okay, this is an overachiever. You're exactly. And or you're serious about wherever you are. Right. Whatever level you're working Professionalism. On, you yeah. are committed to. Yeah, I needed that job too. I had a kid. I needed, well, Professionalism. I a kid. And yeah. that's important. Okay. And that's what we lack right now. I want to give um, five signs. And I got to give it to you. You, know, you already know. Five signs that you are not ready to be a leader. Hmm. Now, if this pertains to you, maybe you need to reevaluate things because you have people out there talking about something. I'm a leader. I'm this. I'm a. I'm an alpha female. I'm an alpha male. You shouldn't have to say that because people should be able to see it when you walk into the room. Now, if this pertains to you, like I said, maybe you need to reevaluate some things. Okay. Five signs you are not ready to be a leader. One, you can't take advice. Two. You're paralyzed by criticism. And we know some people, like if you actually say something, they get on the defense. And it's like, wait, wait, hold on. And everything is not meant, you know, for malice. Also, you're threatened by subordinates. Subordinates, however you want to do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah could that, mm -hmm. You need affirmation <laughs> from popular people. How many people we know? Talk about the jewelry. <laughs> I need you to say, Oh, you, because you already know uh -huh. when you look in the mirror, you be like, oh, I'm going to kill him with this one. Watch this. Boom, boom. And then when somebody comes, be like, oh, you look great. I like that. You be like, yep, I got it. Okay. Also, you can't make hard decisions, especially if someone disagrees. Those are signs that you are not a leader. Hmm. Any of those fit the bill? Um, I, I was like, I'm, I'm thinking about that hard decision one. Because, like, you could be the one that wants to make that tough decision, but somebody above you sees some reason why it shouldn't happen. Um, you know, I, I think that one is up in the air. Do you saw a hard decision would be, okay, I got to terminate my friend. Uh-huh. And it's like, how do I tell my friend that they're fired? Yeah. But, but, just <laughs> let, but let's say you get a boss in place that says... Hey, did you truly do everything that's needed what to I, back it up? And that's what it says. Look, yeah. especially if someone disagrees. So if your boss is like, I think you need to get him opportunity. But you know that that's your friend. And it's hard to talk to your friend because they think you're friends. And it's like, uh-uh, you doing this and you want to come in here. Then how did the friend get the job anyway? Not from you. How about that? Because <laughs> I had somebody that, listen, she uh, had her nails done. No lie. Came into work, clocked in, and sat there. And then it was time to get the clients off. And she was like, well, my nails, what I just came back from the salon. I said, well, you need to clock back out. I don't care. And some people yeah. feel as though if you're friends, they're like, okay, that's just my friend. No, fair, firm, and consistent. Let's do this the right way. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, I get that. I get that. And then my boss was like, well, she did get her nails done. She is a good worker. She does come to work. Yeah, she come to work, but she don't come to work. Yeah. Like, she come on time, but she doesn't come to work because she got to eat breakfast and stuff. First, okay, she clocks in, uh -huh. eat breakfast. On the clock. On the clock. This is stuff you're supposed to No, I'm sorry. Call it what you want. You got to do what you have to do. I'll be like, no ill will. Yeah, and to me, well, I think if you're friends, I think your friends should want to make you look better and not give you the problems. Yeah. But, no, I was going to, yeah. I mean, because that's, I mean, there's some problems with that. But I just think like sometimes there could be a decision that you know is the right thing. And for whatever reason, they want it. They don't want it to happen. You know, so it's not like you won't make the right decision or that tough one, but it's sometimes you're um, overridden by what what top top managerial operational control people may view as not the right route to go. You always refer back to the protocol. Yep, that's it. That's it. You that is the best way to make a hard decision is you look at the protocol. Did they follow the protocol? If they didn't, did they know they weren't following the protocol? Did you correct it? If you corrected it, they understood it and they still did not follow the protocol. I've had to be a union rep. I've been the president of a union. I've owned businesses where I had to supervise people. I've been supervisors on the job. And whenever I find myself in that position, because oftentimes I did work with relatives, you have to go back to what is written. He know, because that's what yeah, he do. Yeah, I, <laughs> and it is hard, but... If you've done all you can to support them, there comes a time where you have to look at the good of the company or the situation. Yeah, and I, and, and like what a, I, I guess a lot of times was was taken in cons like is like okay, like for example, I can introduce something that I believe okay, this is the letter of the law as far as like what the contract says. However, 
like there could be this other thing where it's like, well, you don't want to do this in this time frame because of this and this and that. But I'm like, yeah, but this still exists. And they're like, yeah, but this is not the greater good. You know, even but it's though written. It's, it's the policy. But that's what I'm saying. So somebody need to revise I mean, it. I mean, not, not that they need to revise it, but like, like if if certain things go unaddressed, then they continue to stay unaddressed. Hey, hello, because it's something else that may come up that may be more paramount than that particular. Her issue. Nikki look alike to me. She's just so, a three. <laughs> like, but then you have the the best practice or common practice that you can use to challenge the written or to support it or not support it you still have to have a standard because if you operate off of emotion which is the difficulty in making a decision you have to make sure that you are not being of detriment to whatever the cause is you're promoting okay oh I look y'all got me go next week's show let me tell y'all what it's gonna be about <laughs> next week's show is about unions so and, and I'm like I can't oh. wait because I got a lot of questions with unions, and I'm sorry I'm putting this out here like right now, but y'all don't know. I cannot wait till next week's show with the unions because you have certain jobs that don't want unions, and we getting ready to get down and how important unions are. Um, are they beneficial? All that stuff. But that is next week. Let me get with these hot topics real quick. The Super Bowl. Now, uh, other celebrities are upset with, I already told you guys some weeks ago about uh, Rihanna said she wasn't doing the Super mm-hmm. Bowl and stuff because she was standing with uh, Colin Kaepernick until it was like mm-hmm. fair for every player. Um, however, Maroon 5 is doing it. Well, other celebrities and musicians feel like Maroon 5 should not do the Super Bowl. Now, in case you guys didn't know, you know, the Super Bowl, you don't get paid for. It's just uh, publicity. Yes. I didn't know that. How about that? Yes. It's for, you know, everybody know who you are. Now, Maroon 5 is not, Adam Levine is out there. Mm-hmm. Maroon 5 just kind of just been chilling. Well, he, he is Maroon 5. He, he We know he is, you but the rest saying, of the group. So, yeah. And then he, they got the one black guy. So they were saying, some of the people, and I got my air quotes, allegedly, uh, they were saying that he should be the one to saying um, no and really understand the injustices of injustices. Who's, of, so, who's doing the Super Bowl? Number five. You no, know, what network? I don't know. Is what, it NBC? I don't know which one. Did I put that? I, I don't put know it down who, what network it is that's doing it. But he might have greater ties to the network if it's NBC. Right. Now. He do the voice. Oh, he does. Vo- you know what? It probably is. So, but here's the thing. So it's like you darned if you do, darned if you don't. Almost like with Chrisette Michelle. She went and she did the uh, president. Oh, yeah, she caught it. And then, bam, guess what? We're, you, well, you, I heard from her. But, but the thing was, it's like this. Let's say, for example. Would you? Oh, oh, let me just give an example, though. Okay. Brian McKnight, he did the uh, Republican, um, when Bush was in, in the office, uh-huh. he did the Republican convention, right? Uh-huh. They didn't even say his name right. They called him Michael McBrown or something like that. <laughs> like, whatever. What, you know I what remember mean? that. Yeah. They didn't even know. But see, like, nothing really came from that. It was just like, hey, he did this. They wanted him to be a part of it. There's black Republicans, whatever. You know, uh-huh. boom, boom. The problem with Chrisette Michelle was, was that this guy had took every dig at black people, at women, at, at, mental, at, at, at handicapped people, at everybody. POW, you know everything, P-O- yeah. P-O-W, everything. He said he made something, he said something bad about everybody. And then you perform for the guy. That was her problem. Yeah, he like because I'm saying, like it was in fact the fact that he was a cons- that he's a Republican because Michael Ma- uh, Brian McKnight did his thing, and that was no, it was just like that seemed kind of odd, but it was okay, you know what I mean. But this guy came out against all these people, including like two, you know, she's black. He came out, <laughs> you know, and, and she's a woman, you know, and he, 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 he he's not in, in any mind progressive to this these particular groups of people, and then she performed for him. So that was her. That was her problem. So, she, but she got paid. So, and she wasn't getting paid. So, but the thing is, is that if you, if you, if you, if people believe that you align with an elite, if you align with the group that promotes these things, then why would I support you? Okay. You know, I mean, because yeah. the thing is like this: how's the record sales? They're terrible. Well, I mean, why? Why? Where's all these? Like fifty percent of the. Because she was coming up. She was coming what? up. Because I was feeling her. But what I'm saying is, at least. 50% of the country who did support the guy, 51%, let's just put it out there, something like that, whatever uh-huh. the number was, but let's say it was more than half, it had, it didn't help her in any way. No, because they wouldn't even buy you know, music anyway. anyway. You know what I'm saying? So it was like like you you abandoned your base 
for this paycheck that you didn't even you that can. you didn't even need. You know what I'm saying? I mean, not that you didn't need, because I'm sure you ever, ever you know she need the money. But what was the what was the price of it? Well, right in the you know end, what, I'm saying? what was the price of in, it? In the yeah. end, so Maroon Five, would you? I mean, that's like either way. It's not going to hurt their base. Okay, I don't think. I mean, what, what, what do you think? Because I ain't heard him come up with nothing in a minute. I don't even know who Maroon Five is. Adam Levine. Um, um, I'm trying to think of one of their songs. I, it's all in my. I can hear it. All right, right, head, like, right. They're song. pretty good. He, he had a song recently with um with uh what's that what's that one uh, uh young lady that don't do well in anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> Cardi B. They, she, they Cardi had a, B. Yeah, he had a song with her recently, and it had to. It was something. It was. Uh, I mean. I don't know. I think hip hop is that Sunday all morning. Over. Is that the name of the song? No, Sunday Sunday morning was a good one though. With um, oh, Maroon Five. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that was a jam. Mm-hmm. That, I don't know, you know the words, but I could do the, the fake guitar sound. Um, but yeah, I just I just kind of feel like I mean, like I don't know if it if it damages them enough, like to to do it, like it, like it's like well, like technically. She said goodbye. Uh. Listen to them sound like me. Who's singing on the song? They got a, you know, a karaoke. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, they got some stuff out there, but I just don't know if it, I don't think it hurts them to do it. See, I don't think it would hurt them because, like, you was like, who are they? Because they've been, like, they were, like, popping at the beginning, and then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, where are they? No, no. I mean, they they alive and well. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna write them off. You know what I mean? write them off? Like, it, like they, like... To, to me, I think like the the choice of who they have do Super Bowls nowadays, anyways, is kind of like like before it was like you had to earn something, you had to be, you know what I mean? You had to be like, somebody, you, be, you know. Now, I mean, but I think they somebody. You think they somebody? I think they somebody. They still, well, last year, remember but, uh, Justin Timberlake? Justin Timberlake did it when well, guess what? Yeah. A lot of people were upset because you upset. you won't let Janet come back, but you he let him come back. Yeah, he shouldn't have been able. He like he got no heat over that, and no he the one that pulled it off. No heat, no heat over that. Interesting. Why did they do that? What's that's your a whole nother show? Right, right. right. I'm like, and it makes you say, like, what's really going like, on? was like, oh, Janet Jackson. I'm like, well, he ripped it off. Like, he could have been like, Janet, I'm not gonna grab you in your breast area, in your, in your, in your, in your bosom. I'm not gonna do it. He could have easily said that. He pulled it and pulled all of it off. Oh, yeah, man. but he, but the thing was, he was a part of. Like, he, it wasn't like she was dancing and it fell off. He grabbed it and pulled it off. Yeah, he grabbed it and pulled it off, but it was her malfunction. No, he grabbed her, her brazier and he ripped and he pulled it off. Now it may have been made to de- de- be detachable, but he he very much played a role in that. He played a and, huge and nothing role. Nothing happened in it. to him. So clearly, they trying to put it on her because it was her wardrobe. She planned it, and but he executed it. He executed. You ain't got you ain't got to do something that you think that you like that could possibly be a bad idea. You know what I mean? Like you don't like it's like, yeah, I don't think I should do that. You know what I mean? Because what do I look like being this man grabbing this lady's brassiere and ripping it off? Even sure. if it was made to be ripped off, it's made to be ripped off. But what is what is the image of that? And they feel they feel as though like like now idea. would that would they would they have did that set now after Me Too and all that? They would have never did that. They no. never did it. No, you're right. They wouldn't have done they it. They never did. So I'm just saying, like he, like there was no responsibility. That was like, hey, you agreed to do that. Didn't you think that that might have just been a bad idea, just because of you being a man doing this to this woman on on a, on the biggest telecast Stage, in, the, yeah. on the, on the world? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Interesting. All right, now let's move to the next one since you just brought it up. The Me Too movement. Now we got women coming back from way back in the 70s talking about extra stuff that happened and still with Bill Cosby and all these chicks that did some fellatio and all that other stuff and they want to come out the closet. I'm like, Grandma, Grandma, just keep that quiet. You you really about to say you did this. And, And then wanting to sue him. Bill Cosby? Yeah, somebody else well, came I, I out. Think, I think the only reason Bill Cosby went, had had the case even heard against him was because the last one with it was in a certain time frame. I did. I just. I mean, like, I'm, I'm no lawyer, but I just don't know if they would have the the evidence to be able to say I got a a, a winnable civil suit against the guy. So now I just want to put this out here. 
he says to this last one that he ended up getting, you know, convicted for. He asked her about the dream. He says, here's, here this is, and take this. And mm -hmm. she takes it. And then he, I, I'm confused as to, you know, and I'm a female with the whole Me yeah. Too thing. Well, it's it's almost like, well, wait a minute. You didn't have to drink that. It was offered. Like the one, remember he said he offered the yeah. one cookies this or something. She one. ain't want That's that. Yeah. Was, offered her cookies. Tea and cookies or something, but she wanted wine and pills or something. Right. Like that. It was How something to that effect. But How I, does I, that work? I just think the thing was with, with him, um, well, I was about to say, I lost my, uh, lost my train of thought. I, I just kind of feel like, okay, it, it, I don't even know what to say because it was, it was on my head what to say, and I lost my, my, my thought. But I just, I just kind of feel like he, he was so wrong for the things that he, that he, that he allegedly that, did. Right. Oh, my Kate, my point was this. The thing that was interesting to me was how he could be not found guilty by one court, then to be appealed, and then it's like this overwhelming, like guilty thing. You know, I thought that was kind of kind of weird how that whole play, how that thing played out. Not to say that if I thought he was, I, I it was immaterial to me if he was guilty or not because I had no skin in the game. I, you know, what I mean, not right. that I don't care about people, I do. But the point was was that like it 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 took on a life of its own where it was this like. I think it left guys thinking like, well, if there's anything where somebody like just felt a certain way, how am I going to be portrayed? You know, like it is this, I don't know. Is this a, it, it, like it was like, what is his name? Uh, Steve, no, um, Henry Cavill, the guy who plays Superman. He said that he's not going to get into a relationship because he's just scared to be ruined because of some, what somebody may think. Now, I, I think that may be a little bit extreme Over extreme you know what i mean but i think the issue is like the impropriety of everything the issue that happened that made bill cosby's thing so bad well it was bad because of what it was but uh -huh. even worse was the fact that he boasted about this marriage he was in all the time that he was in hollywood or, or you know bill right you know, so it was just kind of like had you just stayed at home well you know what i mean yeah and i just, get that I, I i get that point too but here's the thing that the issue that I have when those women, he boasted about his marriage. So those women knew he was married and still came to the hotel. Yeah, but some still, of them were saying that they were drugged, though. I mean, I mean, okay, I so all they, of them were saying they were drugged. So you, so, I, I, ain't, I ain't okay with the whole drugging thing. That's not uh, what I'm talking about. I'm talking about these people that deliberately came over. This girl, he asked her, "Do you want some tea and some crumpets and some cookies?" She ain't want that. Let me get the wine and the pills. Something is totally wrong with that picture. Uh, and I think that some of these people are. Pretty much watering down the Me Too movement. Well, I don't know if they're watering it down. Some you know people, I mean? some of them. I, mean, I, I don't. I mean, I, it Monica just, Lewinsky. Go ahead, because I'm getting ready to go well, there. Monica Lewinsky. That was a totally different thing. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know if she was. Because to me, like, uh, it was more to that. It and, was. It was more to that because she, you know, she was. It, she was interacting with other people to kind of be like, oh yeah. By the way, put this dress up in storage and all that stuff. Like who? Like if someone was having an affair, I don't think that they would put their dress in a safety deposit box. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like it was why more, would you it say was more to that? Okay, to so we're gonna talk about they had the little Monica Lewinsky story that came out that you know some people watch. I watch a little bit of it, but I felt like I knew it anyway because they just like plastered it. Well, Monica Lewinsky says that she was gutted after meaning that she kind of got slander after yeah. he said called her. Air quotes, that woman. Uh -huh. And then she, you know, was like slandered as uh, that woman. Like she just had an affair with the president. And, they, and so they were trying to say that, um, allegedly, that she uh, was, he used his position of power. She was an intern, all this yeah. extra stuff. She said they had a relationship. They would meet up and all that. Everything that she did, she's trying to allegedly the word to the curb, come out with this whole Me Too thing. You know Me Too, I, Monica. I, I just think she is trying to catch the perfect wave right now. You know, but I, to me, I just think there was a little bit more to to what had transpired there. Yeah, they because, were like in a full-fledged relationship it, into it, my understanding. Well, well, it's just like, it's just like people who like, like, 
like she like she had this physical evidence that she hung on to in the most secure way. Now she did this, talk so, about that. So it was like why would like like if she said was, she went to dinner in a dress and didn't know that she had spillage on her dress. But, but I guess and nobody said I, nothing. I, just, I mean I'm just saying I don't I don't I I just kind of don't see her thing as being a part of these other women that were in this thing because it was like she like 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 it's like one of those things like oh I won't make this you know I don't know how to put it but the point I'm saying is like. It just seemed like there was more to her thing, more of a larger plot. Right. You know, these okay, other women are saying agree. like, hey, this happened to me. I may have been going to hang out to have a good time, but not that good of a time. You know, right. this okay. happened to me. So I just don't know. I, I think hers was deeper than that. Okay. That's fair to say. And I'm thinking like now, because remember, she wasn't talking for a long time. And then now she got this little special. And I'm just like, okay, like you said, she's just trying to catch the wave. Yeah. I'm like, Monica, nobody really want to hear about all that. And this man was married, too. So, of course, he's going to deny it. Yeah. Who's going to sit there and not deny it? Uh-huh. I don't know. Hey, what's happening in the movie world? I went to go see Creed Thanksgiving night. That's how I spent my Thanksgiving night. I went to the 1020 show to go see Creed. I was like, man, what time is it? I was like, oh, I got some. I'm going to see. I was like, anybody want to go? People was like, nah, I'm all, I'm all over turkey loaded. Okay. And I usually eat a lot on Thanksgiving. But anyway, I went and seen Creed, the second installment, or the second installment of Creed, the eighth installment of the Rocky franchise. Okay. This movie was really good. Was it? It was really good. It was good, though, not because of what happened in the ring, but the story, like, like the, the one thing I'll say about these Creed movies is that the stories are really good. This, uh, So this is, this to give you an idea, this is Adonis, um, uh, in the beginning, he, he, he gets the belt, so he is now the world champion. Okay. And so at this point in time, there's also Dragoff, who is in Russia. And he's um, seeing all this. Well, he's in crime area. But anyway, he's seeing all this take place. And uh, his son is also training. And um, so it's a promoter that says, oh, this is a perfect storm of things. We need to have this fight. You know, I want this fight to happen. And so the bigger piece was like how how Adonis deals with his father's death, how he recognizes the other relationships that people have with Apollo and their loss as well. You know, with this, especially like the tournament that Rocky kind of goes through not being the one who was reluctant to throw in the towel because his friend was like, no, don't throw in the towel. You know what I mean? And then he ultimately died. So that that story arc was really good to really just embody like, OK, these are what all these characters feel around this time. They even had Felicia Rashad was just as stunning and beautiful as ever, you know, in this in her portrayal of uh, Apollo Creed's wife. And um, she was, uh, it, it was, it was really, she brought a sense of, of, of the film being grounded in, in like this reality of like, okay, if you're going to make this choice to fight, don't put it on anybody else but yourself, you know what I mean? Okay. And it was kind of like he, he, he was just, he was angry for all, he was angry for all the right reasons, but his, um, his, um, his emotions got the best of him. Let's put it like that, which happens to people. So I won't go into a lot of stuff, you know, because we pretty much know how this movie ends. But um, but the point was, it's the journey. Okay. And, and that's the thing. When you know what the ending is going to be, the journey is what you need to uh, embrace upon. Right. And and the journey was so, is, was, was a good part of the movie, was just like, how do I go from this to being, you know, I, I reached this pedestal of, of, of perfection or, you know, you champ. So let's say perfect in, in that sense that his father once had. Now it's all about this other arc of like, how do I do against this thing that also was my father's demise? You know what I mean? Okay. And then how do I just deal with everything else that's just happening to me? Because like they didn't really do anything really about like the fame of it or anything. It was more or less just concealed to his his relationship with Rocky, his relationship with Apollo's wife, his relationship with his his kids, uh, his uh, fiance. <clears throat> so those stories. So worth seeing or not? 
Yeah, it's worth seeing. I don't know how many times you will see it, but it's worth seeing at least once. Okay. You know, Lion what I mean? King. I didn't see the line. I King. know you did, but that's supposed it. to be it. I'm excited. Well, I, I'm excited too because James Earl Jones is back re- reprising his role uh, in this piece. I'm I'm really interested on how Disney. Uh, like I seen the um, Jungle Book. Oh, you saw the Jungle. Oh, yeah, okay. and it's sort of set up the same way where it's like these animals are kind of like real like looking animals or whatever. But I I didn't see the Lion King, and, and to be honest with you, it's not a remake that I felt like we needed. Okay. I have to agree with that. Yeah. The first one was such a classic. What What are you doing? Yeah. It was just like... (laughs) Right, right. It was just like... And there are some movies, too, like that is a classic. It's like, why did we have to do that? Like, I I don't think... Like, I just think it was something like Disney was like, hey, we can do this, so why not do it? You know what I mean? But I just kind of felt like, did you need to? Like, I didn't didn't really feel the... the, 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 uh, I I didn't feel like it was a movie that anyone was asking for. Okay, I, I just don't think you he know. Didn't feel as though it was necessary. What about the Green Book? The Green Book, haven't seen that yet. Interest, actually, I look for it. It's not. I gotta go like like I think Canton is the also. It's place not it's in the, around the area. It might be like last I checked, that was Thursday night. Okay, so things could have changed by then, but I couldn't find it. Um, but that's what I think about the Lion King. I was like, I, I was like, I can understand them doing it. But I didn't see the need for it. Well, a uh, younger generation, a lot of the audience said they wanted to modernize it. Well, I, well, I think like this though. Ah. <laughs> like, like when you think about that, like remember Disney used to always do like, oh, this is going back into the vault for another ten years. You won't be able to get it again, right? You know what I mean? Like, like what we're, we're happened to that? Like the whole like I guess they like well the access to stuff is just so like you can get it no matter what. You know okay. the IP is there. You can always be able to just get the stuff. But it's kind of like like it was it was one of those things where it was like again, did we need it? Okay. And then, then if we was going to update it or whatever, you know what I did? I would have just changed the whole graphics and everything like that, and did it, and it played over the whole voices and stuff, and just made the graphics look different. But that would have been a different kind of reboot. But what about the widow? Because I got to keep Whitt- it. okay. Widows I haven't seen, but I heard on good authority that it is a, a good t- contemporary piece. Okay, um, that does deal with. Uh, relationships and race and that sort of thing in its own kind of way it is at the heart though a heist film but i heard it with on on, on good authority i heard it was worth seeing okay well let's go with this shop talk question of the week this shop talk question of the week is true story okay i saw it and experienced it so if you have dinner guests you have dinner guests and they bring a bottle Okay. okay. Is it okay for them to take that bottle back if it's unopened? If it's unopened? Is it a gift to the person or to the party? What? <laughs> I'm I'm hoping it's a gift to the party or person when they well, bring well, let, it. Well, let's, let me say it like this. I bring in my casserole. Half of it half of it's eat and half of it's gone. Do you tell me at the end of the night, oh, you can take your food with you? See, that's a difference. How's if, it if, different? That's a difference because if the host says, go ahead and take it back, that's different. Uh-huh. Not just you take it. Go ahead, Kim. What do you think? Were you asked to bring it or was it a BYOB? No, it was just a gift that you brought. It was a gift uh-huh. that you brought. Then you leave it if it was a gift. If you brought it to enjoy it while you were eating and you didn't mind sharing, but no one shared with you and you want to take your stuff home. Take it home. Okay, yeah. go ahead. My issue if it's for the party or for the host. Because if I'm it's saying. for the party, then it's it a for? leftover. Right. And it's I'm entitled to back. leftovers. You're entitled to leftovers? You're entitled to leftovers. And it was a guy, and this guy will come to every party, every party, and he will bring his, let's say, case of beer. Because uh-huh. I know he probably listened. So he bring his <laughs> case of beer. And every time... He would take his half drinking uh-huh. case of beer back. What was left over, he would take it back with him. So it makes you wonder: Is this for you? At I mean, all I the parties. Do that, but I mean, if you don't want everybody to indulge, when I give it to you, my intention is that it's gone. It's right. no longer mine. But if a person brings their own stuff and no one shared it or indulged, I mean, are they thinking that maybe they just didn't want any, so I'm taking it back home? I mean, what's in the mindset of the person who brought it and what's in the mindset of the person yeah. who received it? I mean, that's 
to me that depends on the circumstances. Because I, I think I think though too though like even like lives who the audience want to add. Go oh, ahead. Okay. I think beer is different than like an actual bottle. Because beer, you know, that's like the guy's personal drink. So, well, I mean, for the guests, right, I think they have a right to take it back if it's beer. Okay, go well, ahead. I, I just think, like, let's say it's some liquor that nobody drinks. You know what I mean? They so, buy something that they know that they like that other people don't like. Let's say I bring it tequila, but everybody's a cognac, uh, cognac. Uh, uh, so crowd. you don't bring it. So no, I'm just saying I bring what I, I bring. What I bring for for me, if people indulge in, they indulge in it. But if it's not going to be drank, if no one's going to indulge in it with me, then I think I'm entitled. to Okay, take so it. if it was open, are you taking it back? If if it's open, uh huh. I mean, that's probably even more reason to take it back. If it's open, so other people have indulged, you're not gonna leave it with the party. Well, I mean, are you le- are you closing the party down? <laughs> All right, I'm about to tell y'all what happened. So what had happened was the place where I was at, the family member's house where I was. They know this guy, and they said every time he brings something, he takes it back. And he was like, here. And he puts it there, but he will always take his stuff back. So this one particular time, they warned me and they let me know. I said, okay. So guess what I did? You took it. I took it and hid it. <laughs> <laughs> took it and hid it. I was like, let's see what happened. And guess what? He, he was asked lo- for it. He was looking for it. Right over there. So you got all this other liquor and you want to indulge in everybody else's liquor. You bring yours, but you want to take yours back, but you didn't drink everybody else's. Oh, well, I didn't. Crown gone. Like, so what? He, he brings something and drink everybody else's drink. Yeah, he brings something, and bring it drink back. everybody else's liquor. He brings his little stuff and then he takes his back. That's a problem well, well, for me. I mean, well, I wouldn't even have had it. I would have made sure it was open and everybody had a cup, even if they didn't drink. Or like, like, it, you, like you need to try this. You know, like, oh, I don't really drink that. Okay. Because I was asking the same question. Like, th- this was my oh. thing. I said, is this the same bottle recycled? Like, at the other holidays? You know what I mean? You bring oh, the 4th of July. It's like, okay, I'm going to take it back. I'll crop. bring it. Right. Yeah, it's <laughs> crop. Yeah. It makes you wonder, like, ah. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if he's entitled. I think he, I think if I come to your house and I present it to you, like, hey, here you go. Like, once I do that, it's kind of yeah. gone. I mean, if like you're presenting gone. it to the, if you're bringing it for that purpose and that's your <laughs> gift to the event, then no, don't take it back. That was your gift to the event. But if that's just something you decided to bring on your own and no one else chose to indulge, I don't see a problem with him taking it back. All right. So, all right. There we got it. Mixed, mixed reviews. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I want to tell you guys, they got uh, the thing now was like the sexy bedrooms. So, I guess they feel sexy as though the people bedroom. need rest. So, I'm just going to do this with my little male's medical moments. Okay. Get you proper rest and make sure that when you are going to lay down, even in hotels, when you choose your hotel, try to get a sexy bedroom. Okay. To relax. That sounds expensive. Does it? <laughs> Yeah, I would go to the desk and be like, uh, "Excuse me, I, I like need a sexy, sexy bedroom." But guess what? Room. Here's what they do. Here's what you're looking for. You're looking for soft linens, soft lighting, and the scent. Now, I went on. Uh, I went to Mexico, and we were talking about it. it. Was like, "Oh yeah," when I found out you can get the scents and the pillows to make you kind of relax. I was ordering everything. Mm. Give me the scent. I want this flavor. Well, scent or whatever. I had citrus. Citrus was my thing. Still is. That's why I said Nikki's. What is it? Nikki's natural. Yes, naturally Nikki. Naturally Nikki. Yeah. Give me a good scent. But I want to put this out here. If you want to relax and you need rest, like I said, this is the most wonderful time of year. But you can get stressed, especially if you spend all your money on Black Friday. Nobody trying to do that, so you can kind of sexify. Sexify. Hey, that's a new word. I don't know. You might let you get it right. You let me get away with that one. Sexify your own bedroom, and this is how you do it. Those little uh, thread counts and all that other Uh, stuff, it really matters. Mm -hmm. It really matters. So, you want to get some soft linen. Like I said, you want some soft lighting in your room. You want to make sure that it's like dark in your room, and you want to get some Mm -hmm. scents. Now, here's some sexy scents because you know I had to give it to you. Sexiest of the scents. Spicy scents. Oh, okay. Cinnamon and ginger. All right. I think that's that's kind of sexy. I, I, I it makes me think of apple pie for some reason. But go ahead. I bet it does, yeah. Mr. Apple, Cook. Apple pie is delicious though. So. Floral scents. Now I don't think floral is really like a sexy scent because flowers just kind of make me wake up. I don't. Well, vanilla. Vanilla is supposed is considered a sexy scent. I could, okay. Lavender. 
Okay. Musk. Now uh-huh. let's let's be. I would clear. say think Musk would be the sexiest of all sex. For a guy. Uh-huh. For you know a female that's sitting there like you get that yeah. as long as it's his scent though, and, and M U S K not M U S T. <laughs> so we want to make sure that you didn't bathe, okay? Musky. But if you like the manly scent, Musk is the one. So sexify word of the day. Mm-hmm. Sexify your bedroom if yeah. you need some rest and relaxation. You don't have to have somebody in there with you. Yeah, but I, those are your spicy scents. But I would think the musk would be just because it's the most exotic of the ones you name. I mean, granted, vanilla is really a hard thing to find. But yeah, like a true vanilla. Okay, you know, yeah. like if you're looking for a vanilla bean, like vanilla bean. Yeah, that'd be a good one. I wonder where you have to go for that. You might actually get a vanilla bean, man. Just get a vanilla bean. Yeah, you might have to get one. You know what I mean? But put I, it in I, a pot. Put it, hey. Put it in a pot with some water and boil it. The whole house smelling sexy. Yeah. All right, lovely people. <laughs> that is my time. I thoroughly enjoyed you as I do each oh, yeah, and every single house. Saturday. Find you, embrace you. Most importantly, always, always love you. Until next week, people. Shut up on your spreaker.com.